for the opening kickoff of the 2008 season. Again, Colgate did win the toss. Dartmouth now will kick off. And we get whistles before we're ready as uh, a loose football came from the Colgate sidelines. Raiders will drop two deep. And uh, number 13 is Sam Breslin. Number 27 is Noah Jackson. Get ready for the opening kickoff. And putting the foot into the ball, Donald Kephart, and he'll kick it out of bounds over on the Colgate side of the field. So a mistake to start the game. Well, that gives Colgate excellent field position. Kephart's got a very strong boot. He's a little bit erratic. He got all that one, but it goes out of bounds down inside the 10. So Colgate will start first and 10 on its own 40. It used to come out to the 35. The last year, the year before, they added five more yards to that. So... Uh, excellent field position for the gate as they come up for their first offensive possession. Greg Sullivan, the sophomore, is the starting quarterback. Jordan Scott, the senior from Hyattsville, Maryland, is the tailback for the Raiders. All he's done so far this year is rush for 303 yards in two games. Sullivan to throw, and the first play of the game is caught. Doug Resnick. Wide receiver into Dartmouth territory at the big green 45, makes the catch and goes out of bounds, a 15-yard gain, first play. Well, they fake the play action to Scott there. Dartmouth, of course, anticipating that he's going to get the ball. Instead, Sullivan hung on to it and found the open receiver for a first down inside Dartmouth territory. Big green coming right to the line of scrimmage as uh, both the uh, Cornell Raiders shift to the right side. Sullivan moves back. It was shotgun formation, first and 10. This time he will give it to Scott. And he'll uh, reverse direction, cut it back into the middle of the field, taken down after a few yards by senior Jeffrey Smith. A defensive tackle, some help from Ian Wilson. Well, Scott is not a, a flashy runner. He's not got elusive speed. He just likes to pound it, and he keeps coming all day long. Sometimes you think you got him stopped, and it may not be to the third quarter until he breaks one. But he gets his yards. Seven career touchdowns against the Big Green. It'll be second down and six after a four-yard gain. Again, they go shotgun formation. Sullivan calling a play out from back there. Looks to throw. Fires downfield. Sidelines. Ball caught at the 20-yard line. 15-10-5. And in goes Pat Simons. He outjumped the Dartmouth defender. Got the ball. Defender goes out of bounds. Simons has the left sideline. It'll go as a 41-yard touchdown, and Colgate leads 6-0. Well, Simons has the advantage. He's 6 feet, 6 inches tall, up against David Johnson. He went up and made the catch. Johnson lost his balance, so Simons had a clear path to the goal line if he didn't go out of bounds, and he made it all the way to put the Raiders up 6-0 with the kick coming up. So Simons... We had four catches for 38 yards against Dartmouth last year. The extra point hits the upright, and it's no good. Kick no good for Colgate, so Stein misses. Colgate does lead 6-0 on a 41-yard pass play. Sullivan to Simons. We'll take a timeout. Back to Andy Kerr Stadium in Hamilton with a kickoff. Our score, Colgate 6, Dartmouth nothing. This is Big Green Sports on 99 Rock and the Dartmouth Sports Network. Your home for big green football. The Modern Rock Station, 99 Rock. Big green in the kickoff return. Phil Galligan will return it from the 16 up to the 28-yard line, and that's where Dartmouth now will go on its first offensive possession. 13-52 to go in the first quarter. Pat Simons into the end zone, a 41-yard touchdown pass to give uh, Colgate the early lead three play 60 yard drive and it took 108 for the Raiders to get on the board today Wayne. Well Sullivan certainly looked good the sophomore quarterback making his third start after the starter Ralph got hurt completed two passes including a 41 yarder for the touchdown. It was his second touchdown pass of the year now Alex Jenny number five for the big green and he wants to throw on the first plays looking long sidelines overthrows Galligan to the Colgate 40 yard line. And he had some running room. If that pass is on the money, Dartmouth may strike for six. Dartmouth goes deep down the right sideline. 
to Galligan, who's a, a speedster. It was just overthrown by about a yard or two. Galligan had a step on the defender. Uh, pretty good blocking there. The first play, Jenny had plenty of time to make the throw. It's going to be a key for the Dartmouth this year to see how quickly this young offensive line comes along. Alex Jenny threw for five touchdowns, three interceptions. 32 for 62 last season. Now quarterback will keep it. He faked it to Milan Williams. Now Jenny angling right side gets a first down for Dartmouth. Run out of bounds into the Colgate bench as he crossed the 40. And nice. a pickup of about 11. Excellent job by Jenny running that belly option. He faked it to Milan up the middle, left the ball in his chest for a long time, then pulled it out at the last second, had some space out wide, gets the first down. Milan Williams, a 5'9 senior out of Mobile, Alabama, is the starting tailback, the starting fullback for the big green, Nate Service. Again, a fake to Williams. Jenny wants to throw. Sidelines caught. Galligan into Colgate territory, and that's a big green first down. Well, that looks good for Dartmouth. The offensive line is giving Jenny the protection he needs. He looks poised in the pocket. He threads the pass right to Galligan for first down inside Colgate territory. So two completions in a row or two big plays in a row for Jenny. Philip Galligan last year, 25 receptions, 258 yards and three touchdowns. That connection for 15 gives Dartmouth the first down of the Colgate 44-yard line. Just underway, 6-0 Raiders. Now Milan Williams with his first carry of the day to bounce out right side. Will uh, pick up about three yards or so. Looks like Jim Mara, defensive tackle out of Montgomery, Massachusetts, a junior, makes the stop. The uh, front four for Colgate, Julius Barley, Carlton Walker, Paul Mancuso, and Austin Douglas. Greg Hadley, Mike Carbone, and Ted Marshall, their linebackers. Chris Ekpo, Uzi Ida, Mike Barry, and Wayne Moten. The secondary guys, Moten, had four interceptions last year for Colgate. Second down, again, it's Williams, and he'll, uh, on the draw, able to get a yard, Tripped up, may have been linebacker Hadley who got a hand on the foot. And Dartmouth will be into a third and long here at 12 minutes to go in the first quarter. Well, you know that Colgate's going to remember Milan Williams. Last year he ran the ball 30 times against him for 179 yards. An excellent day rushing. So Colgate clearly keying on him to set up this third and long. Ball on the right side, hash mark. Jenny has two ends to the right and two to the left. Jenny out of the shotgun looking for uh, Tim McManus. And the pass one hops McManus. He cannot make the catch. It'll be an incompletion, fourth and six, and Dartmouth chooses to punt. And there's a veteran punter for the big green in Brian Scullin, number 98, who last year averaged 34.4 yards per punt. He'll stand just behind the Dartmouth 45. Deep on punt return. Here for Colgate, they have number 80. That's Pat Ryan Simons. It's a good snap. And Scullin booms one. Simons will let it hit over his head. It hits at the three and bounds into the end zone for a touchback. So Colgate now will go on its second possession, 11.24 to go in the first. A couple of first downs for the Big Green, but they didn't get much in terms of the running game, set up a uh, long third down, and Dartmouth unable to convert. Yeah, two nice first downs, the one on the option by Alex Jenny and the second on the pass to Galligan. But on that third series, they bogged down, unable to uh, pick up much yardage. They punt. They really only gained about 20 yards on the transaction. They punted from their 41. Nice punt by Scullin, but it goes in the end zone. So Colgate comes out for their second offensive possession at their own 20. So it counts as a 40-yard punt with no return. Bob Lipman along with Wayne Young. Weather uh, beautiful today, and uh, Wayne showing 68 degrees at kickoff. Of course, by the time we get down to the uh, games near the end of the year, Brown and Princeton... Certainly will be noticeably cooler. Well, this is a great day to play football. Um, it's sunny, not too hot, not too humid. Nice crowd here at Andy Kerr Stadium, named after the great Colgate football coach from the 30s and 40s, whose record of 96 
career victories was recently surpassed by Coach Biddle, who got his 97th a few weeks ago at Coastal Carolina. So Coach is clearly up there in the pantheon of Colgate football coaches. All right, Colgate again with the spread offense. Three receivers to the right, only Scott in with the quarterback, Sullivan. Scott now takes the handoff, runs it left side, and bangs his way across the 30. It has a first down. The drive starts at the 20. Following the touchback, and Scott, who carried once on the opening drive, runs for 11 here at a first down. Colgate put three wide receivers out to the right. Dartmouth has to put some personnel out there to match up with them. That left space inside. They give the counter run to Scott to his left. He bowls over a tackler or two and gets a first down. Nice job. So first and 10 for the Raiders, who lead the game 6-0. This time it's a fake to Scott as Sullivan drops back. Airs one out, and that ball is batted down. Incomplete pass. Oh, he's sacked. And that'll be Rayhan Mutalib who gets credit for the sack, and they'll knock him down back of the 22-yard line. Big play defensively for the senior. Well, good job by the secondary. They got burned a few minutes ago for that first Colgate touchdown. This time, everyone was, was covered. Sullivan had to put the ball down by then. Mutalib. Uh, caught up to him to knock him back for a 10-yard loss. So second and long for Colgate. Scott in the backfield. And he'll take the handoff. And no, the quarterback kept it. Sullivan across the 30, around the left end of the 35 and up to the 36. Yeah, great fake to put the ball right in the hands of Jordan Scott. And Dartmouth had keyed on Scott. They tackle him right there at the line of scrimmage and the quarterback Sullivan bounced out with the ball. So he yeah. keeps on the option and gets pretty good yardage. He gets most of those 18 yards back on that play. Uh, nice fake by Sullivan and then he ran over a defender uh, to get a few extra yards at the end. Pick up of about 16, it's third and three for Colgate with the ball at their 38. Raiders lead first quarter, six nothing. And Colgate on its second possession of the day. They wear the maroon uniforms over the silver pants. Here's Scott, hit at the line of scrimmage, falls forward and is close to the first down. As we see Charles Bay and Joe Battaglia there to try to wrap up Scott, but by falling forward, he put across the line and up to the 41, got the three he needed in a first down. Well, nice job by Colgate. They had a second and 18. Dartmouth was in a good position on the field and then downs, but Colgate fights their way out to get the first down at their own 41. 9.28 to go, first quarter. Colgate moving left to right. They're at their 41, first down and 10. Sullivan right under center. We'll give it to Scott out of the tailback. Spot accelerates across midfield into Dartmouth territory and down to the 41. Before the Big Greens, Matt Dornak can collar him. And a long run for Jordan Scott. Well, Dartmouth's going to have to tackle him a lot better than that or it's going to be a long afternoon. Three or four Dartmouth guys had a shot at him. He kept his balance, kept going forward, picks up about 20 yards on that run. First down inside, well inside Dartmouth territory. Jordan Scott already four carries in the ball game. That one went for 17. Had a first down at the Dartmouth 42-yard line. Sullivan will work out of the shotgun. He'll give it to Scott, and Dartmouth will wrap him up. Just a short gain on the play, and for the big green, looked like uh, Patrick Scora, the sophomore out of Washington, who had the job there to Keon Scott, got him for two. Good job by Scora. He came up and went right after Scott. Hung on, limited the damage to two yards. Drive started back at the 20-yard line after a Dartmouth punt. Colgate has now driven to the Dartmouth 40. Raiders playing their fourth game of the year. Sullivan to throw the ball is tipped and knocked down. And I, the way he's celebrating, Marlon Alibioso, the junior out of Stamford, Connecticut, was the one who got a paw on it. He did. Number 46, that was a pass play by Sullivan, a quick out. Alibioso got a hand on it to set up the third and eight. Now with most teams, you would assume passing down, but with Jordan Scott, probably four down territory, they could run the ball. Scott just to the right of Sullivan. No, he will throw. Drops back in midfield, steps out of the pocket. Trying to escape the tackle, dropped the football as he was hit. It's loose, Dartmouth saying they have it, and we're waiting for an indication. 
Let's get to the bottom of the pile down at the 44 yard line. And it is Big Green Football. That was a funny moment there. Max Capello, number 60, the defensive tackle, recovered the fumble and picked it up and started going, you know, ran away with the ball. The referee was at the pile trying to find out who had the ball, and Capello standing five yards away saying, I've got it here. It took a while to sort it out, but eventually they make the right call. So a nice fumble recovery by Dartmouth. They get good field position at their own 45 and stop that Colgate drive. 8.07 to play in the first half. And Dartmouth on the second possession of the season. Forcing a turnover. Good pressure on the quarterback. Now Alex Jenny will give it to Milan Williams. And he's hit as he got back to the line of scrimmage. So no gain there. And it'll be second down and 10. I didn't see who got the tackle that forced the fumble. Um, but good job by Dartmouth. They had gang tackling on Colgate. Someone stripped the ball loose. Capello comes up with it. Now Dartmouth's got to get some production going on their second offensive series. Jenny with Milan Williams in the backfield. The ends left are Eric Paul in the slot. Philip Galligan to his outside. Jenny looking the other way. Swing pass caught Milan Williams. And he'll be hit at the 48 and pushed back. Short gain of about three yards. Chris Ekbo, the senior out of Jonesboro, Georgia, leading the defensive pursuit there on the pass to Milan Williams. Well, so far, Koge doing a good job of shutting Milan down. He's got four yards on three carries. Uh, he's got one reception only for a few yards. So Koge clearly keying on him after what he did to them last year. Third down, seven. 6.57 to go in the first quarter. Dartmouth trails at Colgate, 6-0. Jenny will work out of the shotgun. Drops back, has time, looks, ball caught, Galligan beats his man, gets the first down. Nice job by Galligan, a wait for the defender to commit and then accelerated past him to get the big green on who set it down. Set the Colgate 41. Galligan was the second or third leading receiver last year. He had 25 catches. He's off to a good start this year with two catches, both for first downs. And he made a nice move there to get upfield and get an extra few yards out of the play. So this time you have Galligan left, Paul right, and the tight end, John Gallagher in the slot. Milan Williams will take the handoff, started right, then cuts back middle of the field. Pretty good pop on Milan Williams at the 35, but he got about seven on that run. Good job by the right side of the offensive line for Dartmouth, creating a pretty big hole, and Milan gets up through it. He did take a shot at the end, but a gain of seven, almost eight on that play. So these are the kind of second downs that you want, Wayne. Uh, Dartmouth's had a lot of second and tens, but now a second and short. You really can look in your playbook, see if you can find something here. Jenny out of the shotgun. Ball at the Colgate 34, Jenny to throw. Looks right side for McManus, got it, and I think that's enough for a first down. Wrestled down by Wayne Moten over in the corner, but sophomore Tim McManus has his first catch of the day. Well, McManus had 28 catches last year, the leading returning receiver for Dartmouth, and that's as good a one as he's going to have all year. He was well covered, nicely thrown ball. He had to go up high and extend over the, the cornerback to come down with it, get the first down. So he didn't try anything too fancy, just got the first down. At the Colgate, 35-18 to go in the first quarter. Dartmouth on the march, second offensive possession. Jenny fakes to Milan Williams, looks to throw. Down the field for Galligan. And he can't come up with it over Jenny's his head. Flag down on the field. There's a flag on the play. Hold on the big green. So Dick Biddle will move them back after the holding penalty. Will make it first down and 20. Well, the story so far for Dartmouth has been the performance of the young offensive line. A lot of sophomores are freshmen at center. Uh, in spring, in fall practice, the coaches experimented with a lot of different lineups trying to find the right combination. It takes the longest of all the units for the offensive line to come together, get all their calls right. And the Dartmouth's doing a good job so far. They've given Jenny time. They've had a couple of first downs running. Very much in this game, losing 7 nothing midway through the first quarter. Penalty on the big green for a holding, moves the ball back to the 40. It'll be first down and 20 
as Alex Jenny drops back. Airs one out right side. It's caught by McManus. They got the penalty yardage back. Gain of about 11. Far sideline in front of the Colgate bench. Jenny to McManus for 11 yards. Same pattern they ran a few plays ago. The second catch by McManus gets another first down, and doesn't get a first down. Picks up about eight or nine yards, but that was a second and 20. 4.50, clock running in the first quarter. Alex Jenny has Dartmouth on the mark. Second down and nine from the 29 yard line. Finishing drives with touchdowns. Big goal for Alex Jenny in the big green offense this season. Jenny drops back, wants to throw over the middle, knocked down. Trying to run a quick pass to Eric Paul, but Colgate's Mike Barry, sophomore, reached out, knocked it down. In the scrimmage last week against Harvard, as he did last year, Alex Jenny has clearly shown the ability to move the ball. The open question about him, as any young player, is the ability to finish the job in the red zone and convert field position into scores, uh, and that's going to be the test of him today and going forward. Receivers scrambling to get into position. 15 on the play clock, plenty of time. Eric Paul will go to the right side. Phil Galligan to the left. Dartmouth has it third and nine. Jenny, play action, fake to Williams, who does a good job blocking. Now the pass, sidelines caught by John Gallagher. There's the freshman's first catch. He's run out of bounds. Short of the first down of the 22, and Dartmouth is in a fourth and two situation. 40-yard field goal attempt. Might be a little long. We'll see how Buddy Tevens wants to play it. They're going to go for it. The freshman kicker. Go for the field goal. Yeah. yeah. Foley Schmidt, the freshman from Minnesota, left footer, coming on for his first attempt as a Dartmouth player. He's got a good boot. Known for his accuracy, here's his first chance. Ball down by Jenny, and the kick is on the way. 39-yard field goal. Got it. Three on the board for the Big Green at 4.05 to play in the first to cut the Colgate lead in half. It's now six to three in favor of the Raiders. We'll take a timeout with a score, Colgate six, Dartmouth three. You're listening to Big Green Football on 99 Rock and the Dartmouth Sports Network. And that capped uh, for the Big Green what was a nine play, 33 yard drive that followed the fumble recovery. And the key play in that drive, it won't show up on the scoreboard, but on that third down pass to Gallagher that set up the field goal. Colgate came on a blitz and Milan Williams, the tailback, picked up the blitz perfectly, gave Jenny the extra time, and that led directly to that field goal and the 6-3 score. Kickoff is Donald Kephart and he'll drive Colgate all the way back to the end zone comes Sam Breslin and he'll make it, he'll take it out of the end zone and bring it back to the top of the 20. Good job by Kephart. His first kickoff, he kicked it out of bounds, put his team a little bit in the hole. That one he kicked well into the end zone. Colgate chose to run it out. They get to their own 20, but much better defensive field position for the Big Green. Kepper looked really got all of that one. Foley Schmidt, who just kicked the field goal for the Big Greens from Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota, where he went to St. Thomas Academy. Same school as Tim McManus. Tim McManus. Replaced uh, McManus as the St. Thomas quarterback. Here's the handoff, Jordan Scott, right side to the 25, across 30, and up to the 32-yard line. Ian Wilson there for the big green, Matthew Dornack on the stop, but Jordan Scott with enough for a first down for Colgate. Well, there's the Ian Wilson we're used to seeing. Scott broke into space and it looked like he was going to do even more damage, and Ian comes flying across the field, gets him around the legs, brings him down. But Scott off to a great start. Five carries, 37 yards. He'll shift positions, move the fullback. Eric Tupta over to the other side. They've been going pretty much single back. This time Scott will try to follow Tupta, and he'll cut it back across the 35 up to the 37 as a flag comes from behind. Our officials today, Tracy Jones, the referee, Steve DeSangro, the umpire, John Schwartz, the head linesman, John Bradbury, the line judge, George Botts is the field judge. Mr. Uh, Melchizek Plummer is the side judge. Bob Bittner, the back judge. Phil Natoli, the clock operator. 3.26 to go first quarter. It's Colgate 6 and Dartmouth 3. And we do have a, a holding penalty here on the Raiders. So it's going to set them into a first and 20 situation. Well, last time 
Dar Colgate was facing a second and very long. Sullivan made a nice run to get almost the first down to see if Dartmouth can hold them this time. That was the first penalty of the day on the Raiders. Now they have it first and 20. Sullivan will work out of the shotgun with Scott in the backfield. Good snap. Scott fakes. Sullivan keeps across the 30 and up to about the 34-yard line. Another good run for Greg Sullivan. Yeah, he runs well. The sophomore, All-State New York a few years ago. Comes here, expected to be the second teamer behind Alex Ralph, but Ralph go down. Sullivan's gotten his chance and has done a nice job. They had said Charles Babb, who's listed as Greg Sullivan's backup, was the better running quarterback of the two. And Sullivan was better throw. He's done a nice job, though, so far. Second and eight from the 34-yard line. 6-3, Colgate, 234 left first quarter. Dartmouth opening on the road today at Colgate in Hamilton, New York, on a beautiful, sunny day. Scott will take the handoff. And holding on for dear life is Pat Scora, and he'll just yank the feet out from Scott after he got five. Well, Scora is listed as only 5'8", but he's a very good tackler, and he's not afraid to take Scott on. He goes right after him, drags him down. Big play for Dartmouth. Third down and three. If Dartmouth can get a stop here, they'll get the ball back. Dartmouth trails 6-3 with two minutes left in their opening quarter. Yeah, these defensive stops when you're playing a good opponent on the road are so key. Third down three, Sullivan will work out of the shotgun and again Scott in the backfield. Awaiting the snap here from Justin Snyder. There it comes, Sullivan wants to throw. Double pumps, then overthrows Pat Simons. That's tough to do, he's 6-6. So an incomplete pass and it's fourth and three. And Dartmouth will get the football back here with 1.39 to go. First quarter, 6-3, to three, Colgate leads. Very good rush by Dartmouth. Forced Sullivan to throw it before he wanted to, and that's why he overthrew Simons. Jeff Smith gets it, Rahan Matalib. Excellent job uh, by the defensive line. So Colgate did get one first down. Now the punt, and it'll be fielded here, and that's uh, Galligan at the 23-yard line. Penalty flags fly as well got about three on the return but I think the penalty is going to be against the big green for an illegal block and block in the back Galligan tried to make something out of it he cut one way and the Dartmouth teammate blocked the Colgate guy in the back so that'll set him back another 10 yards will be Dartmouth ball it was Colgate's first punt of the day Jacob Stein who is their place kicker is also their putter away for the uh Official indication on the penalty here. Legal block in the back is the call. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So it's going to be a pretty deep start for the Big Green this time back at the 16. Be the worst starting position of the three drives. Minute 30 to go in the first quarter. Well, in the first series, Dartmouth got two first downs and then bogged down. The second series, they kept it going nicely, got all the way down to the Colgate 20 and got three points out of it. So here's their third offensive series, but deep in their own territory. Dartmouth lines up in the eye this time, and the uh, handoff will go to Milan Williams, follow the blocking right side, and he'll uh, push up to near the 20-yard line, fullback Nate Service leading the Milan way. Williams on the carry. Gain of about three, maybe four yards. Dartmouth is running a bit of the spread this year with three or four or even five wideouts. That time they lined up in the traditional eye, go off tackle with Milan, pick up a long three. So it'll be second down and seven. Call it the 19-yard line. Jenny out of the shotgun with running backs off each shoulder. Williams to his left. Jenny wants to throw. Now out of the backfield, caught by service. Nate will put the uh, shoulder down and push his way up to the 26, a little bit short of the first down. There'll be a third down and short for the big green. So we move to about 35 seconds left in the quarter. Dartmouth will have to run one play. Gain of six, third and one. Well, that was simple flare pass to service. who's very good with the ball uh, after the catch. He had two Colgate defenders. He managed to get through them, picked up uh, a total of about six yards to set up his third and one. Hudson Smythe moves in his the tailback here will take the handoff, plow ahead, first down, 33-yard line. Hudson Smythe, the senior 
from Menlo Park, California, has been the, the touchdown, the goal line guy in his career. And he took it ahead. Needed one, got seven on what was the final play of the first quarter. Whoops. So from Andy Kerr Stadium in Hamilton, New York, at the end of one, Colgate six and Dartmouth three. We'll be back right for second home. quarter Bob's action right after this. Uh, total yards. Alex Jenny, seven out of ten. Passing the football for 56 yards in that first quarter. Six to three, Colgate leads. So we start the second quarter, switch sides. Dartmouth going left to right. Jenny to throw, sidelines, caught. Phil Galligan at midfield. Goes up and makes a great catch. First down, Dartmouth. Well, the Dartmouth coaches have to be pleased with the way their offense played in that first quarter. They, they have this young offensive line, a new quarterback. They had three offensive possessions. They got a score out of one of them. They moved the ball well. Now this time they start deep in their own territory and are manufacturing a nice drive. They go no huddle here to start the second quarter. Gain of 19 on the pass play to Galligan to the Colgate 49. Jenny to throw. Quick hitter over the middle. The ball caught by Kyle Battle on his first catch of the day into Colgate territory at the 39. And another 10 and a first down. The sophomore from Cincinnati has really come out of nowhere, had a nice fall camp, gets his first chance on the varsity and picks up a first down. First catch of the career for Kyle Battle. From the Colgate 39, Dartmouth marching, trailing by three points, low snap, and Jenny fakes to Milan Williams now, keeps it, bounces out left side, gets to the 32, good run. About seven for Alex Jenny. Alex is off to a terrific start. This is just what the coaches wanted. He's made good decisions. Uh, first time he couldn't convert. The second time down in the red zone, they got a, a field goal out of it. He started this drive deep in his own territory. He's just taking what Colgate's given him, and he's putting together a nice drive. Two ends far to the left. Eric Paul farthest out is Tim McManus. On the right side is Galligan. Jenny to throw. Looking left side. McManus came back for the ball, but as it reached his hands Wayne Moten reached around and knocked it out a solid defensive play for the junior Wayne Moten it's an incomplete pass third and three what was good about that is Jenny put the ball in a spot where either it was going to be a completion or an incomplete but it was impossible for the Colgate uh, player to intercept it and that's exactly how you want that out to the sideline thrown 23rd all-time meeting between Dartmouth and Colgate Raiders Lead the all-time series 16 to five. There's been one tie. Third down for Dartmouth. Jenny looking left side, caught Milan Williams, and he'll fall ahead and get down to about the 26. That'll be enough for a first down. So that's the 10th completion for Alex Jenny out of 14 tries. No interceptions, he's just making good decisions. And especially this young offensive line is giving him time to make, make plays. It was a good play. They threw Tim McManus about 10 yards downfield. Milan Williams came out into the left flat, which was pretty much vacant. And he made the catch able to get the first down. Ball left side, hash mark of the Colgate 26. Jenny to throw. Nope, he'll put it under the arm and rush ahead. Not much there as he'll get to about the 25, maybe the 24. That was a predetermined quarterback sneak. Uh, covered pretty well by Colgate. Looked like there was room there for a second, but the Colgate cover came down quickly. Dartmouth going with the no huddle, going right to the line. That keeps Cornell from changing personnel. Trips to the right side and two receivers to the left. It's an empty backfield for Alex Jenny here on second and eight from the Colgate 25. Jenny, right side pass in and out of the hands of Galligan and again. It's Wayne Moten there out of the defensive secondary to make the aggressive play to knock the ball away. Moten's an interesting story for Colgate. He was originally a wide receiver. Midway through the season last year, they moved him to defensive back, and he just did an excellent job there, came up with a lot of interceptions. Uh, Dartmouth's beat him twice today on the sideline, but he's won the last two battles. Well, Dartmouth already has tried one field goal. They'll try to advance the ball here see what they can do on third down and eight from the 25 of colgate 12 31 to go in the half jenny to throw airing one leaping and a catch it's eric paul who while diving and 
able to bring it in inside the Colgate 10 for a first down. Well, Alex Jenny got rocked on that one. He kept his poise, he saw the rush coming, he makes a perfect pass to Eric Paul. Last year, Paul had it off to a great start. He had 15 catches, three touchdowns in his first three games. Then he got injured, lost for the season. That's just a terrific play now to put Dartmouth uh, on the Colgate five with a chance to go take the lead in this game. First and goal to go. Jenny with Milan Williams behind him. Tim McManus and left. Eric Paul to the right. Jenny going for the corner. Galligan there, and he cannot make the catch. Again, Wayne Moten on the coverage. Dartmouth might want to look away from where number nine is defensively. Well, they got him a couple of times early in the game, but he's got it going out. What a great matchup. Galligan and Moten, two veteran players going at it one-on-one. -on -one. Again, I like the poise Alex Jenny is showing in the, in the pack. 13th play of the Dartmouth drive that started at the 16-yard line. Ball at the Colgate 6. Jenny looking over the defense. Alon Williams is in the backfield. He'll take the handoff. Cuts back left, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Touchdown, Big Green. Milan Williams untouched. Six yards for the score, and Dartmouth leads 9-6. to six. And he was untouched because the senior left tackle, co-captain Alex Rapp, made a terrific block on cold eight, screened the defensive end out. It created the hole. Milan found the space. Dartmouth has a chance now to go up 10-6 with the extra point. Holy Schmidt will kick out of the Alex Jenny hold, and he boots it through, and Dartmouth has a 10-6 lead with 11-46 to play in the second quarter from Hamilton, New York. This is Big Green Football on the Dartmouth Sports Network in 99 Rock. 13 play, 84 yard drive. Well, Colgate started the game out hot on their third offensive possession. They go 41 yards for a touchdown on a pass play. And it seems like here we go again, but they missed the extra point. And then Dartmouth just worked their way back into the game. In the first offensive series, they got a couple of first downs, had to kick. The second series, they managed to get three points out of it. Foley Schmidt, the freshman, kicking a field goal. Dartmouth only had three field goals last year, so they were already a third of the way there. And then, as you said, point, starting on their own 15, Dartmouth goes the length of the field. A nicely put together drive by the entire team to take the four-point lead. Third year in a row that Milan Williams has scored a touchdown rushing against Colgate in the season opener. 10 to 6, Dartmouth in front for the first time. Awaiting uh, Donald Kephart's kick. And it's a high, short kick. Be fielded by one of the upbacks at the 34 yard line. Gigi Cadet gets covered at about the 31 yard line. Couple of yards on the return. And Kyle Kavanaugh is the player who put the uh, special teams hit on Cadet. So good to see Kyle Kavanaugh back on the field. He came here as a freshman. He started against Colgate four years ago, one of the few freshmen to start, but he's just uh, had injuries his entire career, comes out here on special teams, makes a good play. So the starting position for the Colgate drive is the 32-yard line. Colgate scored first. Dartmouth has responded with 10 unanswered to take the lead 10-6. Here's a toss to Scott who pushes off the left side and ahead to the 39 for about seven. Well, this is the kind of game and the t time of game when there's a pretty good chance Colgate's going to go to Jordan Scott for a while. Just give him the ball, let him pound his way upfield, get the hard yards. He's already got 60, carry, 60 yards today. Um, when trailing, Colgate can pretty reliably go to Jordan Scott. Most teams, when they fall behind, right, that's when time to throw. Here is a quarterback on the option. Keeper Sullivan bounces out right side, gets tripped up, and has enough for the first down. Well, Dartmouth, everybody king on Jordan Scott. That time Sullivan keeps the ball. Marlon Alibiosu had a chance coming from defensive end down the line, just missed the tackle. Sullivan gets upfield for the first down. So first down and 10 from the 46 yard line. But Jordan Scott has been remarkable when you look at the numbers that he has put up and he, the active rushing leader in the nation coming into play today. 
Handoff here will be to Scott. He's ahead to midfield. And on the first down run, he'll get another Colgate first down. Just bulls his way ahead for about 13. Well, they announced he just became the leading all-time Colgate rusher. Now, when you consider that includes guys like Mark Van Egan, played a long time for the Oakland Raiders, Marv Hubbard, Kenny Gamble. Been some terrific running backs here, and he's the best of them all. Went by Jamal Branch at the end of last year. And he took Colgate to the national championship game, so pretty Kenny, good company. Kenny Gamble was the all-time rushing leader. Scott will take the handoff here. Hesitated the line. Now accelerates right side to the 30 and to the 25, and inside the 20 down to the 18. Kind of fake there. He ran out right and kind of pretended like he wasn't the guy with the ball, and then... Off he went. And he's going to be pushing 100 yards here um, midway through the second quarter. 94 yards on 10 carries for Jordan Scott. Here's a fellow who scored seven touchdowns against Dartmouth. He actually exploded on the scene against Dartmouth three years ago. He was a reserve in that game. Ran 30 yards for a touchdown that led to a win. That was 21 yards. It's Scott again. It's dragged down by Jeffrey Smith. There's a penalty flag down, though, and it's a hold on Colgate. So what was first and 10 from the Dartmouth 20 will become first and 20 from the Dartmouth 30. And what is the second penalty of the day on the Raiders? Second quarter, 8.09 left at the Yale Bowl. Yale leads Georgetown 17 to nothing. Brown at the end of the first half with a 17 nothing lead on Stony Brook. Columbia 16, Fordham 14, 450 to go in the first half. Princeton with the early field goal leading at the Citadel three to nothing, end of one. And one game was played last night and Harvard rallied to beat Holy Cross. The defending Ivy champion Crimson 25-24 was the final. Under the lights at Harvard Stadium, a crowd of over 20,000, an ex exciting football game. First ever Friday night game in the history of Harvard Stadium. 9.18 to go. Here's a handoff, Jordan Scott. Bounces out right side for about seven or eight. Jordan that was, a, remember, a first and 20. It's down to the 23. Speaking of lights, they put lights in here at Andy Kerr Stadium and they'll, for the first time, play lacrosse under the lights here in the spring. And uh, Bob Cornell, the longtime SID, told me there will be September football under the lights here in the future. Maybe when we're back here in two years, there'll be a night game, Wayne. Well, a lot of the Ivies are going to night games early in the season. There's lights at Princeton. I think they're playing a night game this year. Harvard last night. Second and 13. They fake to Scott and Sullivan taking off right side. Dartmouth does a good job to bring Sullivan down after a gain of only about one. It's third and long. For the Raiders here, they are in field goal range. Dartmouth leads the game 10 to six. Colgate hit the upright after scoring their touchdown in the first quarter. So that's why they're at six, 8-10 to go in the first half. Third down, three receivers come out to the left side. Simons, who had the touchdown reception, is the lone end on the right side for Sullivan. Drops back, has time, looks for Simons, can't get him as he does a cut out inside the 10, and now it's fourth down. Good job coverage by Robbie Kratiger, the sophomore from Oklahoma. That was against Simons, the big 6'6 wide receiver who got the touchdown on him earlier in the game. This time, Kratiger wins the battle. Jacob Stein comes on for the field goal. He's three for three on the year, but a long of 30. This one is 38. Ball will be placed down on the right side, hash mark by Ryan Myers. And as Wayne mentioned, 38-yard field goal attempt by Stein. Line drive looked like he hooked it, and it is no good. No good on the field goal. And Dartmouth will take over here with a four-point lead with 7.48 to play in the first half. Well, good job by Dartmouth. Jordan Scott ripped off about 40 yards to get three or four first downs on that drive, but... Down in the red zone, Dartmouth held, forced the field goal. It was a bad snap. Dartmouth had some pressure on the kick. They, Colgate misses it, so Dartmouth preserves its four-point lead midway through the second quarter. 
They'll come out for their fourth offensive possession. And right now, the Dartmouth offense has to believe in themselves. They've done a nice job of moving the ball and have converted two chances into 10 points. Coming up at halftime today, Wayne, I had an opportunity to talk with Dartmouth men's soccer coach, Jeff Cook. And if you're back home listening in the Upper Valley to our game, the uh, men's soccer team with a match today, is it at uh, 3 o'clock? 3 o'clock against Hartwick. They are 3-1. and one. That includes a win over Indiana, which is a powerhouse in college soccer. They're ranked 18th in the country. Sean Milligan is just a terrific goalie. Last year, Dartmouth went to the NCAA tournament. Uh, they have a freshman, Lucky Maxano, from Zimbabwe, who has scored a bunch of goals. So 3 p.m. against Hartwick today at the new Whitey Burnham facility out at Chase Field. And then the women play tomorrow against Oregon State at 11 a.m. Right, first play of the Dartmouth drive. Jenny on an option toss and the handoff to Nate Service. Takes it ahead to about the 28, 29 yard line. Dartmouth taking over at the 22 following the missed field goal. And again running no huddle. They came quickly to the line and the play net start, but they'll say seven. So second down and three. Jenny to throw quick pass. Paul wide open here on the right side. Leans forward and makes the catch, but he's on the ground as he makes the catch so it'll only go for about a yard and now it's third down and two. Dartmouth a little unlucky there. Alex Jenny saw that nobody from Colgate was marking Paul. They went with the quick snap but the ball a little bit underthrown. Paul has to go to the ground to make the catch otherwise he was certainly going to get a first down. But I like that he recognized that there was an open man uncovered and called for the ball and tried to make the play immediately. So third down and two, 10 on the play clock as Jenny stands back with Milan Williams. Waiting the uh, snap here, Austin Fletcher. It's a low snap, Jenny brings it in, airs one out long, Paul leaps and he cannot come up with it in midfield. Jenny overthrows Eric Paul and it's a quick three and out for the Big Green. And you're right, unfortunate because Dartmouth should have had the first down on the second down play. Gullen comes out for a second punt. He got about 40 yards on his first one. Brian Scullin, number Pat Simons drops deep Dartmouth. for Colgate back at his own 30. Dartmouth leads in the second quarter, 6.29 to play in the first half. 10 to 6, big green. Scullin standing back at his own 15. Perfect snap. Booms it away. Simons will back up, make the catch at the 31. Now off he goes to the right side, to the 32, 33, and a flag comes flying from the back judge on what was a two-yard return on the punt. Great coverage for the Big Green. Well, Josh Spicer, as he did last year, the long snapper. Pass was right on the money, and then he's downfield leading the pursuit. Excellent job by Dartmouth. We have an illegal block by Colgate that will set him back even further. So Dartmouth leads 6-3 with 6-16 left to go in the first half. I'm sorry, 10-6 uh, with the touch, the field goal and the touchdown. So Dartmouth very much in this game. Big Green next Saturday will have the home opener. And uh, as always with that uh, University of New Hampshire game, which is televised, by New Hampshire's uh, WMUR Channel 9 will have a noon kickoff. And two weeks from today, the first game in the Ivy League from Franklin Field in Philadelphia against the Penn Quakers. All right, Colgate, after the penalty, moves the ball back to the 24-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 from the 24 on what is Colgate's fifth possession of the day. Scored on the first. They haven't scored since. Jordan Scott leap over one defender and get eight or nine. Peter Peterman making the hit to bring down Jordan Scott. Well, right now, Jordan Scott is having his way with the Dartmouth defense. That's his 12th carry. He's got well over 100 yards already. He got two, more than 200 last year against Dartmouth, but he's just ripping off five, seven, eight yards a carry. Career high against Georgetown. Right, actually against Bucknell last year, 270 yards. And Scott will run one here off left tackle for about uh, four and a first down. Well, Cornell's, or Colgate's last possession, 
Scott went the length of the field, uh, but the Dartmouth defense held at the end. Colgate unable to convert on their field goal attempt, so Dartmouth keeps its four-point lead. 5.25 to go. There will be one of the big differences, I think, between Colgate having played a fourth game is they certainly are going to be in, in good physical shape come the end of the game. And here is the quarterback, Sullivan, on the keeper. A lot of running, we're middle of the field, across midfield into Dartmouth territory at about the 40-yard line. Quarterback calls his own number, and Sullivan took it ahead for about 23 at a first down. Well, that's another thing Jordan Scott does to you. He's so effective, you start to focus on him. You forget the other guys. Colgate takes nice advantage of that Sullivan with the best run of the day for him up the middle of the field for a first down at the Dartmouth 40. And Sullivan making only his third career start here today. First and 10 from the Dartmouth 40. Fakes to Scott, bounces right. We'll keep it to the 35, the 30, and then run out of bounds and maybe was hit late. Yeah, that's a foolish penalty for Dartmouth. He was clearly out of bounds. Someone took a shot at him. That's going to add 15 yards or half the distance. So two nice runs by Sullivan. Dead ball. First and foul. Number 56 of the defense. Get out of bounds. 15 yards. Automatic. You're right. It is a gain of 13 down to the 30. And then half the distance to the goal on the personal foul penalty. Late hit on the big green. They did announce it was Andrew Didi, so it's first down from the 15 for Colgate. Raiders trying to move back in front. It's 10 6, Dartmouth 434 to go here in the second quarter at Andy Kerr Stadium. Sullivan, give it a Scott, angling left now, cuts back, gets inside the 10 and down to the 8. Jordan Scott inside the 10. That was Marlon L. Biuso at the bottom of the pile. Scott got six. Colgate effectively mixing it up now, giving the ball to Scott, and then Sullivan, the quarterback, hanging on to it. You pointed out Colgate's going to be strong in the fourth quarter. Last year, recall, Colgate from, came from 28 points down. I think having played three games is a big factor in that. Under four minutes to go in the half. Colgate trying to take the lead late here in the second quarter. Sullivan will work out of the shotgun. It's second and short. They haven't thrown in a while. Here's Scott, running room they won't need to. Scott into the end zone. Touchdown, Colgate, a nine-yard run for Jordan Scott. And the Raiders move back in front. It's 12 to 10. So Jordan Scott's touchdown is his fourth of the year and his eighth career touchdown against the Big Green. Well, he's got 15 carries and 128 yards. Colgate will go for one. Stein with the extra point try. Ball down, kick on the way, and the kick is good. So Colgate will settle for a three-point lead here at 13-10 with 3.40 to go in the first half. Let's take a timeout. You're listening to Big Green Football on 99 Rock and the Dartmouth Sports Network. So what will officially be an eight-yard touchdown run by Jordan Scott. Colgate leads Dartmouth. 13 to 10 with 340 to play in the second quarter. Scott, 15 carries and 128 yards. Here's Jacob Stein's kickoff coming down to Phil Galligan. Got it at the six to the 15 to the 20. He'll bounce outside now, 25 and to the 28 yard line. Good return for Galligan. First down for Dartmouth and Wayne, there's plenty of time. 332 and three timeouts for coach Buddy Tevens. Well, so far, Alex Jenny and the offense have shown pretty good poise. They haven't tried to do too much. They worked their way out of a hole on that possession, that third possession that led to the touchdown. So with all their timeouts, three minutes, 32 seconds to go, the ball on their own 28, not a bad place to start. We'll see UNH next week. 337 left in the third quarter in Durham today. UNH 29, Albany 24. Well, UNH started with a victory over... 1A Army, the fourth year that they've beaten. They beat Duke, they beat Northwestern, they beat Marshall. Pass, sidelines, caught, service. 
But Colgate thought they were going to run him out of bounds, and Service takes it up the field and gets to the 35. Pass play goes for seven yards. But a nice job by Nate Service. That was simple flare pass, and it looked like he was going to get tackled out of bounds, but he dodged the one Colgate defender and then got upfield, got through a couple of others to turn a two-yard gain into a seven-yard gain. Second down and three. Dartmouth not in a real hurry up at this point as we just passed three minutes to go in the half. And Milan Williams will take the handoff here, get the first down, bounce it outside and get to the 41 before he's covered over on that far corner by Chris Ekbo. So the gain of six on the run by Milan Williams who has the Dartmouth touchdown in the first half. That's the 10th first down today for Dartmouth. That's a good sign. That's a sign of a team able to move the ball patiently, take what's available. What's of concern is Colgate's on pace for 500 yards in the game from the 41. Jenny fakes to Williams. He'll keep it at across the 45. The quarterback falls forward for five. Yeah, right now Jordan Scott is averaging eight yards a carry. Uh, you know, he carries 30 to 35 times a game. If he keeps that up, do the math. It's going to be a high 200-yard day and two or three touchdowns. And of concern is that he's one of those players that seems to get stronger as the game goes on. Dartmouth would love to make this a, a two-for-none possession because Dartmouth will get the ball first in the second half. Jenny fakes to Williams now, will bounce out on second down and five under pressure. He's got Williams and a first down. Quarterback bought his own time by using his legs and while moving to his left. Uh, makes a tough throw and hits Milan Williams for a first down into Raider territory. And the key there, Bob, is moving to his left. He was flushed out of the pocket. When you're going to your left, you're right-handed. you got to throw against your body. It's a situation that leads to all kinds of troubles, but he found Milan Williams open on the sideline for the first down inside Colgate territory. Still three timeouts for the Big Green with a minute 50 to go. Jenny play action, fake to Williams, airing one out, looking long for Tim McManus, and he overthrew him. Wayne Moten had the coverage. It'll be an incomplete pass, second and 10 for Dartmouth at the Colgate 45. So they waited before they got into Colgate territory before they tried to air it out. But I like the call. They've been moving it steadily with short plays, running plays. They get the first down. They've got their timeouts. They've still got a minute 45 to go. It looks like a penalty against Colgate. I didn't see what it was. And it's a 15-yard penalty. I think it may have been a late hit on Jenny. That moves the ball first down and 10. Dartmouth at the 30-yard line of Colgate. Well, that's clearly a big play. 145 to go in the first half. Jenny has two ends to the right. Battle is furthest out. Kyle Battle on the right side. He'll come back on the left side. Got a pass. Gallagher will be run out of bounds at the Colgate 21. That's the fourth catch. the passer was the penalty. So that's a break for Dartmouth. They had first down. They went long, incomplete, but instead they pick up a first down and then some on the penalty. And that time they go to... Galligan for his fourth catch of the day and a gain of eight. So now this is a critical moment for Alex Jenny. The young quarterback has got him on, on the move. They're almost into field goal range. What you don't want to make here is a mistake and give the ball away. You want to finish the deal here. Even a field goal will tie the score at the half. Key moment in the game. Dartmouth trails 13 to 10. Jenny has Dartmouth second down short from the 22. Give it to Milan Williams. He'll try to cut outside left and should have the first down. It'll give Dartmouth a new set of downs with a minute 30 to go. And Buddy Tevens now will stop the clock for the first time, or this may be to just to move the chains. Well, there's been several law changes this year that affect the timing of the game, and one of them is when you go out of bounds now, it used to be the clock didn't start till the ball was put in play. Now when you go out of bounds, the clock starts as soon as the referee puts it ready for play, except in the last two minutes where we are now, so it's hard to keep track of it. From the 18-yard line of Colgate, Alex Jenny stands back, has plenty of time. Airs one out near side. It's a high pass, and Galligan 
cannot bring it in. And again, Wayne Moten on the coverage. Well, Dermott had a little success against Moten early in the game, but he's uh, clearly won the last four or five of these little matchups. But Dartmouth, the ball on the inside the 20, on the 18, so that's a 35-yard field goal. Dartmouth's already got, what was the first one, 30? The uh, first field goal went for 39 for Foley Schmidt. So it's certainly within his range. Uh, but a minute 10 to go, and Dartmouth still has its timeout. So have all to kinds be, of opportunities here. Yeah, I want to be thinking seven points yeah, right now. Though. Absolutely. And again, Dartmouth to get the ball to start the second half. Here's Jenny to throw. Boy, nearly had one picked off. Was looking for Galligan. And Corey Moses stepped in front of Galligan but couldn't make the interception. Well, young Mr. Jenny got away with that mistake that uh, we were talking about. That was going to be not only interception but likely for a touchdown. It was out on the flat. Nobody was going to catch up to him. It was just dropped by the Colgate defender. So Dartmouth has another opportunity here, third and ten on the Colgate 18. Dartmouth has thrown the ball 24 times in the first half. Colgate has thrown it five times in the game. Jenny, 15 for 24 for 135 yards. It's third down 10. Dartmouth trying not to settle for the field goal. Jenny looks underneath pass. Caught by Galligan. Running room middle of the field. He's inside the 10 and has what may be a first down at about the 8. So It'll Galligan depend on the spot. The well, that was the inside screen. Galligan starts out on the far left. Comes inside across the middle. Nice pass by Jenny and a nice run by Galligan, and it's going to be very close. They're going to measure it. It looks like we can't tell from up here. It's, it's close. So it'll be either be fourth and inches on the Colgate 8, or it'll be first down and goal on the Colgate 8. We do play on an artificial surface here at Andy Kerr Stadium in Hamilton. Dartmouth is short. Oh, interesting choice here for Coach Stevens. Do you take the three right now? and go into the locker room tied, or do you go for that? It looks like it's about a foot. Uh, and it looks like they're gonna go for the kick. Play for the tie with 54 seconds. You're on the road, being tied with Colgate at the half, that's a pretty good result. So the freshman Foley Schmidt from Minnesota made his first kick, made his first extra point. Here's a chance to go two for two on the day. Remember last year, Dartmouth only had three field goals on the season. So here's a guy in the first half of his college career gonna be well on the way if he can make this one. Right in the middle of the field. 26-yard attempt. They have five seconds on the play clock. We'll get it off. Jenny down. Tyler Schmidt's kick is good. Whistles, though, before they got the playoff. Well, there's a mistake there. If they're saying the play didn't get off because there's still two seconds showing. Oh, there was on the play Colgate, clock. Colgate, I think, called timeout. Okay. Or maybe Dartmouth did because there was almost no time left on the clock. Unlucky, because the kick was good. But yeah, it was a timeout by Dartmouth, so the sidelines, I think seeing the same thing I did, seeing it looked like the play was slow in developing, there was only five on the play clock. Doesn't matter, they don't lose any yardage on it, they have three timeouts. And that's another one of the rules in effect this year that's a change. It used to be you had 25 seconds play clock from the time the ball was placed but it used to take the referee sometimes 20 25 seconds to place it right. now it's 40 seconds from the time the previous play is over as soon as the play is over they start the clock so uh, it's shortening the game a little bit uh, and that play clock was running out so the freshman being tested mentally a little bit see if he comes on and d does it again certainly within his range it's a 28 yard kick the 25-yard kick. So we'll head back out out of the field now, and well, you hope that isn't a mistake that come back that comes back to bite you, right? 13 to 10, Colgate. Again, Alex Jenny will put the ball down at about the 16. So it'll be a 20. Oh, we lost the signal here. Now Colgate will call time. WFRD All right, we're ready. over 11 in White River Junction, 99 Rock. Okay. So Dartmouth ends up making a field goal, but because the sideline called timeout before the, the kick, the points do not go up on the board. And then as Dartmouth came to the line, Colgate decided to take a timeout. 
but the so we still have not attempted the field goal Dartmouth trails Colgate 13 to 10 with 29 seconds left in the half but it still remains a field goal that should be made the balls on the nine that's a 27 yard 26 yard field goal and it's in the middle of the field uh, but Foley Schmidt the freshman from Minnesota getting his chance early on but he was looking for the kicker Foley Schmidt he had come all the way back over here to the practice net in the tee and was taking a couple of practice kicks. I like it. He's got his routine and he's going to follow it. Left footer. And again, we'll try for a field goal here late in the first half. Ball's down and now Schmidt's kick is on the way and he is able to drill it through to tie the game with 25 seconds left in the first half. Again, a nice drive by Dartmouth. Moving the ball methodically down the field. Mixing it up nicely. Passes, runs. That's three scoring drives for the Big Green in the first half. They had the ball five times. Three times they went down the field. Once they got a touchdown out of it. Twice they got a field goal out of it. That's converting red zone chances. One of the things we talked about with Alex Jenny. Uh, so a nice job by the offense today. The defense has held Colgate to 13 points, which sounds good. But Jordan Scott with 128 yards and a touchdown has been ripping Dartmouth up. There's not a whole lot of options for the Colgate offense. They have kept it on the ground with their quarterback who did complete a pass to Pat Simons that went for a 41 yard touchdown. Colgate has had the ball five times. They have two touchdowns and a missed field goal. Dartmouth has a touchdown and two field goals and we're all even at 13 and 13. Colgate's missed extra point is what is costing them here from uh, having a one point lead most likely at the half although Colgate will have two timeouts in 25 seconds. Well here's Kephart the sophomore from Lafayette California kicking off the first one went out of bounds uh, the second one went into the end zone third one was pretty good he's got a strong boot you want to pin down Colgate and don't let him score here at the end of the half. Kephart's kick right down the middle of the field fielded on one hop by Sam Breslin Try to cut outside and gets run down from behind by Ian Wilson. A uh, good special teams play. So Colgate will start at the 35. They have 19 seconds. Ian Wilson's the senior, fifth year senior, out on special teams as he did last year against Colgate, making plays. So Colgate has two timeouts. It'll be interesting to see what they do, whether they just take a knee and take their tie game into the locker room. It looks like it. They're packing it in really tightly. So Sullivan will go to one knee and Colgate will go to the locker room all even with the big green. Nothing decided here at Andy Kerr Stadium in the first half at the end of two quarters of play. The big green and the Colgate Raiders tied 13-13. It's been a pretty good game. Yeah, excellent job by Dartmouth, especially offensively. The big question mark coming in was how is the young offensive line going to do with the freshman Austin Fletcher at center, a couple of sophomores at guard, uh, the only veteran, Alex Rapp, the co-captain. Everybody expected at minimum that they'd be under a lot of pressure, but they've given Alex Jenny a lot of time. He's been successful with the pass game. They've run the ball pretty well, so uh, good grades to the offense so far. Uh, the defense struggling to contain Jordan Scott, but so have... Um, Defenses for four years all over the country. He's one of the best running backs you'll ever see, and he's proven it so far in the first half today. Yeah, showing uh, offensively, and we'll go through the numbers when we come back. Uh, if we're going to send it over to Dave Collins. Dartmouth, 213 yards of offense in the first half. Colgate, 236. That sounds pretty even, and it has been, and on the scoreboard couldn't be more even. Dartmouth, 13. Colgate, 13. You're listening to Big Green Football on 99 Rock. At the 45, we may have penalties both ways, Wayne. There was a hit at the end of the play that may have been a Colgate penalty and maybe an illegal block on.
Gallagher, eight carries, 30 yards and a touchdown. Phil Galligan, five receptions for 61 yards. Milan Williams had four catches in the first half. Dart will get the ball first. Good way to use Milan. Eight, eight carries, four catches, moving him around the field. He's very effective that way. Short kick will be taken by Galligan at the 18. Right sideline of the 30. Running room to the 40 and run out of bounds. Flag down at the 45. We may have penalties both ways, Wayne. There was a hit at the end of the play. That may have been a Colgate penalty and maybe an illegal block on Dartmouth before that. Yeah, Galligan went out of bounds and got hit after he stepped out. That's going to be 15 personal foul. Now, I don't know if they offset each other. They must. Uh, I'm not sure how they do that, assuming the first one is for an illegal block on Dartmouth. Colgate 14 first downs to 13 for Dartmouth. The total yardage of 236 for the Raiders, 213 for the Big Green. We had three penalties on Dartmouth for 35 yards in the first half, four penalties on Colgate for 45 yards. There are two fouls on the plate. During the return, holding number seven. Holding number on Dartmouth on the return. We'll that was the first penalty. We will mark foul. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. After the then after Ten the ball. play, number 39. late number hit on Colgate. So that'll mean 15 after, after the, the Dartmouth play. So we don't kick it over. We mark off the two penalties, and Dartmouth will get the ball. The penalty on J Jacob Stein, the kicker for Colgate. How so about you, that, huh? <laughs> you know the coaches are a little unhappy about a kicker taking a late hit. Um, otherwise, Dartmouth would have been pinned down in its own territory. As it stands now, they start with the ball in their own 47. So terrific field position for the Big Green as they come out for their first possession to start the second half. Tie game, 13 all. Alex Jenny will be the Dartmouth quarterback and wearing number five this season. Milan Williams will be the starting tailback. Phil Galligan and Eric Paul are the ends. Dartmouth, in fact, will go with an extra end here on the first play of the second half. Sophomore Kyle Battle, who had his first catch in that first half, is in the slot. And Jenny wants to throw on first down, forced out of the pocket. He'll run with it, and then last minute wanted to flip it back. Unfortunately, the guy who was there was Alex Watka, the right guard, not a, not a, a running back, and Jenny will have to take the sack. Well, that's the first sack of the day. The Dartmouth had done an excellent job of giving him protection, the offensive line, in the first half, but that time everyone was covered. Jenny tried to run, nowhere to go. Second and 14 for the Big Green. Front line. For the big green, Alex Watka, the sophomore, is the right guard. Shane Peterlin getting the start at the other guard, and the freshman, Austin Fletcher, is the big green center. Here's a second and 13 play, long count. Jenny takes the low snap, gives to Milan Williams, who then bounces right, and uh, will only get back uh, maybe to the original line of scrimmage Milan on Williams the run. That'll make it third and long. Good block by Alex Jenny on that after giving the ball to Milan. He turned and around and took out a Colgate ball. defender. I'm sure that makes the coaches a little nervous, but a good play by the junior quarterback. Alex Rapp, who is a senior captain, is the Dartmouth left tackle. Right tackle for the big green is 66, Alexander Tote. Jenny to throw, third and 10, now forced out of the pocket, in trouble, unloads and threw it away. Well, good job by Jenny, he was inside the hash mark so he couldn't ground it, so he threw it into the Colgate bench uh, to avoid a long sack, but uh, Dartmouth gets one yard on its first possession of the second half. Brian Scullin coming out to punt, he averaged 40 yards on his two punts in the first half. 13-18 to go in the third quarter if you're just joining us. Season opener for the Big Green. Colgate playing its fourth game. And uh, Brian Scullin in punt formation for the Big Green on what is a fourth down and nine yards to go. Pat Simons is single safety deep for Colgate at about his 10. Good snap. Scullin brings it in. Simons from the 10 on the return. We'll try to bring it back right. Dartmouth's pursuit is outstanding, and Simons gets nothing on the return. Pat Scora made the stop for Dartmouth, and they just strung Simons out, and he had to keep running 
right to his own sideline. It was a low line drive. And so Simons thought he had some time, takes off to his right, and there was one Dartmouth defender after another. Marking the space, he had nowhere to go, so he ran about 30 yards sideways, uh, but gets nowhere upfield. So Colgate takes over for their first offensive possession of the second half on their own 10. This will be their worst starting point of the day from the 10-yard line, the quarterback for Colgate. Gone all the way today is Greg Sullivan. Came on in game one to relieve Alex Ralph, who was injured. Jordan Scott takes the fake, and uh, Sullivan will bounce it out right side of the 13 for three. Well, Sullivan was the second leading rusher for Colgate in the first half. He carried eight times for 56 yards. That's a pretty good average. The sophomore quarterback, expected to be a reserve this year, came on when the starter, Alex Ralph, was hurt and has done a nice job for Colgate so far. He runs well. He's only passed five times, two completions, but one of them for a touchdown. Haven't even had to give the end names very often. Just Sam Breslin at a Whalen Mass in the slot right. Scott will take the handoff, and he'll try to deke around to Andrew Didi, and he cannot. 56 brings Scott down, loss of one. Well, there's the play the Dartmouth defense has been looking for. The co-captain, Andrew Didi, the senior from Atlanta or Marietta, Georgia, just took a nice angle. Upfield, wrapped Scott up and for no gain. So here's a big third down for Dartmouth. If they can hold here, they'll get the ball near midfield. Uh, good field position. Extra secondary man in for the big green. 11.44 to go in the third. Colgate into a third down and seven. Sullivan calls the snap. Sets under pressure. Releases the ball. Is caught and immediately taken down is Doug Resnick at the 19-yard line, appears short of the first down, and Colgate will have to punt. He only got seven. And great pressure there by the sophomore defensive end, Charles Bay, who got right in Sullivan's face, altered the angle, short throw, and the Colgate unable to get any yardage after the catch. So Dartmouth defense holds Phil Galligan waiting for the kick at midfield. Here comes Stein's boot, right-footed putter, Galligan back to his own 40. And he cannot avoid the uh, pursuit downfield. Excellent for Colgate's Noah Jackson. Who an open field tackle. With a lot of room. There was a nice wall set up there for Galligan. If he gets the corner around Jackson, maybe he has some place to go. UNH team next Saturday. They beat Albany today 32-24. to Alex Jenny. Second possession of the second half. Screen pass service. Had the ball. And uh, they'll give him a catch. The ball came loose and went out of bounds. I don't think it was a catch, Wayne. I, I thought he had it and oh, fumbled it. Out of and oh, that's, 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 the way they, that's the way they ruled it. And so but, it will go as a catch and a two-yard gain. But the, it was right in front of the Dartmouth bench. And when he fumbled it, it was still in bounds. And it was making its way to the sideline awfully slowly. Uh, with Colgate players in pursuit, it was a free ball. But it finally touched the sideline just before Colgate got there. So two-yard gain for the Big Green. Tim McManus to the left. Eric Paul is to the right with Philip Galligan on what will be second and eight. Milan Williams in the backfield. Alex Jenny out of the shotgun. Gives to Williams. Sweep left. Williams to the 45, the 46. And a pickup of about six. Milan Williams on the carry. That left side of the Dartmouth line is doing a good job. Alex Rapp, the captain. The veteran left tackle out in front of that. Shane Peterlin, the guard. Austin Fletcher, the center. Dartmouth tried a lot of guys at center in the preseason. We're really having trouble with the snap. Uh, Fletcher seems to have clicked in the last 10 days. And there he was out in front of, of the pack from his center position. So he's going to be a good one. Milan Williams, who had his only 100-yard day as a Dartmouth running back last year against Colgate, 10 carries. 39 yards today. Third and two. Jenny will try to throw for it. Now under pressure, he'll run. There's running room left side. Has the first down across the Colgate 45 and out of bounds. Alex Jenny runs for a first down for the Big Green. And that was not a predetermined run. That was a pass play. Everyone was covered, but he looked to his left and saw some space. He takes off, knows exactly where the first down is, and gets it. So a nice job by Alex Jenny reading the situation and taking what's available. His sixth carry of the day for 31 yards. First first down for either squad here in the second half. 9-32 in the third quarter. Dartmouth 13, Colgate 13. 
Dartmouth with the ball in Colgate territory at the Raider 44. Jenny right up under center here. He'll give it to Milan Williams. Try to bounce out left. And will take it ahead. Did his best to get one yard. There was nothing there. Left side pursuit led by Colgate's Austin Douglas defensive end out of Ashburnham, Massachusetts. Milan Williams, the senior from Mobile, Alabama. That's his 12th carry of the day, or 11th maybe. He's got about 40 yards. He's getting the hard yards. That one, he did a lot of dancing, but just couldn't find the way through. Now, here's a penalty. Referee it's thought he counted 12. And that's because there are 12 on the field. There's 12 guys on the field right now. <laughs> that's, I think... Our referee today, Tracy Jones, was so was so sure of it. I, he said, you know what, I better just double check. He counted him up. And, he was right. And we're 12 on the field. So five-yard penalty against Dartmouth. So instead of second and nine, they got second and 14. They're only allowed to have 11 in the huddle and on the field at any one time. 8.44, third quarter, clock running. Second down for the big green in Colgate territory. Jenny has two ends to the right, Galligan and Eric Paul. Tim McManus to the left. Jenny looking over the middle. Full wide open. Eric Paul. He's got it. The 25, 20, 15 to the 10 to the 5. And will get tripped up at the 3 yard line. A big play. Biggest of the day for Dartmouth. Nice job by Eric Paul getting open over the middle. Alex Jenny with good protection once again from the offensive line. Saw him put the ball on, a mo on the money and then a nice run by Paul. It looked like he had a chance to score going down the right sideline, but he's knocked out of bound on the three-yard line. But a big completion. What is that, about 40 yards? 45 yards. Maybe a zone defense kind of ran between the zones and was wide open middle of the field. Dartmouth tries to finish it. Milan Williams tries to get around the right side. His run out of bounds at the line of scrimmage, the three. So Dartmouth tries to run wide to get into the end zone. It's second and goal. Big Green trying to move in front no here midway through the third quarter at Colgate. It's 13-13. Now here's where Dartmouth wants to score. The last time they were down inside the five or inside the ten, uh, had that fourth and one, decided to take the three points rather than gamble to take the 13-13 tie at the half, but they really want to score getting this close inside the five here early in the second half. Ball right side hash mark, weak side end is Phil Galligan, three ends to the left, Jenny to throw, looking in the corner, and the receiver, Eric Paul, got uh, tied up. His feet uh, stuck in that artificial grass, lost his balance, and couldn't go after the ball in the corner. And now it's third down goal to go from the three. Wanted to throw a little lob pass in the corner, and as Paul made the cut, his feet got tied up. Well, that long pass play was... Terrifically executed all around by Dartmouth. Alex Jenny, 19 for 29, 195 yards. That'll work. No nope. interceptions. Most importantly, no turnovers for Dartmouth yet today. Colgate's got one. Jenny to throw. Again, going back to the same play. Paul's there. He's got it for the touchdown. A three-yard pass play to Eric Paul. Now Dartmouth knew they had something there. They couldn't get the play going on second down but they strike for the touchdown on third to take a 19-13 lead. You're right, same pattern. They knew they had a matchup they liked. They would go back to the same pattern. Paul gets free, and Jenny hits a lob pass, a timing pass into the corner. You don't have much room for error. He puts right on the money. Foley Schmidt comes on, kicks the extra point. So with 7.32 to go in the third quarter, Dartmouth's in front by seven. Big green 20, Colgate 13. We'll take a timeout back to Andy Kerr Stadium at Colgate after this on 99 Rock on the Dartmouth Sports Network. Coming back in 15, Bob. All right. They're kicking now. Breslin on the return for Colgate to the 27-yard line. Go ahead, Bob, you're back. Colgate has just received the kickoff, and Sam Breslin has brought it back 
to the 27-yard line. Wayne, that was an eight-play, 62-yard drive. Three minutes, 24 seconds, of course. The big play was the pass to Eric Paul, who then is there for the touchdown. Dartmouth 20, Colgate 13, right back to Jordan Scott. First play, the Colgate drive. Andrew Didi brings him down, gain of two. Didi and Ian Wilson that time took him down. So on the prior series, Dartmouth did a good job of defending against Jordan Scott, and they get off to a good start this one. They limit him to two. He's got 131 yards on the day, but so far Dartmouth has slowed him down early here in the second half. Dartmouth in front. We were all tied 13-13 at halftime. Now the big green in front. Sullivan hands to Scott. Angles left side. Boy, nearly lost the ball. End of that play. Down at the 35. Give uh, Colgate about a third and three here. 58, Austin Fletcher. Again Austin. On the tackle. Andrew Didi. Again, making the tackle. Good job by the right side of the Dartmouth defensive line. I heard Jeffrey that, Smith, the right tackle, really has come out of nowhere this year, doing a nice job at the tackle position along with the veteran Mutalib. All right, third down, about three to go here for the Raiders. Scott out of position, now shifts to the quarterback's right. Sullivan wants to throw, quick hitter. He's got Simons for the first down, and it'll be brought down up at about the 47-yard line. Joe Battaglia. Able to get back there in order to bring down Simons, who had shaken free from Robbie Kraniger after making the catch. Well, Simons did the damage in the first half. In the third play for Colgate, he goes 41 yards for a touchdown. They hadn't thrown to him again since. That's his first, second catch of the day for a first down. So expect Colgate back to him. At 6'6", he's got a height advantage over everybody in the Dartmouth secondary. Pickup of 12. And Simons lines up here on the right side where he'll be picked up by Kratiger again. First and 10, Colgate from the 47. Raiders try to answer the touchdown by Dartmouth. Sullivan on the keeper. Fake to Scott, then angled to the right. And he'll get into Dartmouth territory at about the uh, 46. Well, the big green, number uh, 28 on the stop, and that is uh, Matthew Dornack. That's the 10th carry today for Sullivan, the Colgate quarterback, sophomore from New York State. Has come on in relief after their starter went down. It's done a good job for Colgate. 5.05 to play in the third quarter. Colgate on the march. Ball right in the middle of the field, right on the uh, far side of the Colgate, the C logo. Scott finds a running lane, right side, pushed ahead, and has the first down. He ran right into a Dartmouth defender. Pete Peterman. He picked Scott up and just drilled him. Dartmouth defense are going after Scott in a positive way now. They kind of, he was dominating the physical contact in the first half. Now they've taken a few shots at him. Another Colgate first down. But it is enough for a Raider first down as Scott runs for eight. He gives him 143 yards in the game. That'll be first down and 10. Colgate at the Dartmouth 38-yard line. They quickly get Simons out far to the right. Fakes to Scott. Sullivan now rolling to his left. Will keep it and gets a first down and more. Up at about the 25-yard line. Far side pushed out of bounds there. Well, Zach Glaze, the outside linebacker, lost contain. You want to always keep that anybody inside you don't let him get outside you because that's where the problems lies Sullivan wins that battle and gets up field for a nice gain and a first down at the Dartmouth 26. Sullivan may wind up with a hundred yard day as well he's up to 79. Another first down for Colgate they've had a couple of them on this drive Sullivan with Jordan Scott in the backfield Scott will take the handoff, running room with a 15 down to the 11 as a flag comes from the backfield. That's that flag that usually indicates holding on the offense. And you look at the uh, reaction by the Colgate players. I'll tell you all you need to know. The tackle there by Sean, uh, Sean Obuhoff, another freshman playing for Dartmouth. So there's a sign that as Buddy develops this program, He's get, now got freshmen able to play. Uh, that is, that's a sign of good recruits. If, if you can play as a freshman, imagine what you're going to do after two or three years in the program. 
Um, so there's four freshmen already contributing today. Wait, it's not, it's not even a hold, Wayne. It's a personal foul, illegal block. A 15-yard markoff will send the ball all the way back to the 35-yard line. Well, there's the break for Dartmouth. That creates a second or first and 19. And they're out of field goal range. So Dartmouth gets a stop here, even limits them to a field goal. They'll retain the lead. Again, two ends to the right. Quarterback rolling right. Sullivan under pressure and tripped up and brought down. Marlon Alivioso makes the uh, tackle on the sack. Alibioso had to take a stiff arm from Sullivan and stayed with him and brought him down. All the way back near midfield. Well, Sullivan just found out what Dartmouth players and fans know is how quick Alibioso is. The sophomore from Sanford, Connecticut can fly and he just ran him down and then hung on beat the stiff arm, gets the tackle so this sets up second and 33. This is an enormous opportunity here for Dartmouth to get the ball back with the lead as the third quarter winds down. Three minutes to play in the third quarter. Sullivan, little screen pass, caught by Simons, dropped right there. Tackle for the big green goes to number 85, Josh Darty. The junior out of Halifax, Massachusetts. What a great play by Darty. That was the screen and there were some blockers. Uh, available for Colgate and Doherty slices through him. He read it perfectly, makes the tackle before the screen can develop to set up the third and 35. Loss of two on the pass play. Colgate needs to get to the 16 for a first down. They're at their 49. Sullivan will drop back here and air one out. Long down the middle, wide open and caught. This is Sam Breslin down to the 15 and a Colgate first down. They needed 35 and they got 36. Well, that's the one that's going to hurt a little bit for the Big Green tonight. He was wide open. I don't know what coverage Dartmouth was in, but there was no one within five meters of him when the ball came down. And then he found his way to uh, the first down with the run after the catch. So Dartmouth has to regroup. No time to worry about that. But a great opportunity squandered by the Big Green. Colgate first down. And 10 of the Dartmouth 15. Minute 54 to go in the third. Colgate with the ball, but trailing in the game. Dartmouth 20, Colgate 13. Sullivan fakes to Scott, keeps it, and takes it down to about the eight. Sullivan on the cutback, got about seven. This is the season opener for the Big Green. Colgate one and two. Coming into play today, losses to Stony Brook and Furman. They beat Coastal Carolina on the road in Myrtle Beach in week two. Second down, three yards to go. Down to a minute 15 to go here in the third quarter. Scott back there with Sullivan. And uh, Scott will take the handoff. Cut inside the five, has the first down. And he's brought down at about the two-yard line. So Colgate knocking on the door for what could be the tying touchdown. Well, Colgate punishing Dartmouth now for that mistake. Really the first big one of the day for the Big Green. Let Colgate out of a deep third and 33 hole. And now they're knocking on the door on the one-yard line with four downs and Jordan Scott. And it's, you're unlikely to keep him out of the end zone four times in a row from one yard out. Scott has already scored once today. They'll put the ball down. They'll call it the two, one-and-a-half-yard line. And Scott takes the handoff, and he pushes ahead for the touchdown. So with 43 seconds to play in the third quarter, Jordan Scott on a two-yard run, and Colgate is within one. Dartmouth's lead is 20-19, to 19, extra point pending. Remember, Colgate missed an extra point on their very first possession when they scored a touchdown. Jacob Stein, their kicker, will kick out of the hold of Ryan Myers here and try to get us... All even. Ball down, kick on the way, kick is good. Tie game with 42.8 seconds to play in the third quarter. So big breakdown on what was third and a mile. Colgate winds up with a first down and eventually the touchdown. You know, Colgate having played those three games, you know, they're ready for the fourth quarter. You, you get beat up, you get exhausted in a football game. 
And that first couple of games out, you, you, you can't believe how tired you are in the fourth quarter. That's what Dartmouth's going to run into. That happened last year against Colgate. It's just a, an uphill battle playing a team that's really in midseason form, which is what Colgate is playing their fourth game. Uh, nevertheless, Dartmouth is tied here with 42 seconds left in the third quarter, and they're getting the ball, and they've showed the ability to move it. They've had four nice scoring drives today, two resulting in touchdowns, two resulting in field goals. Alex Jenny having a terrific day in his debut this season. He's 20 for 30, 198 yards, one touchdown, and no interceptions. They'll take that production out of him all year long and do something with it. Really important, I think, for the Dartmouth offense to move the football here, give that defense, which has just been on the field for nearly half a quarter, a chance to breathe and get their uh, win back. Because if Colgate gets the ball right back in a hurry, they may be able to turn it into another score. A 13-play, 73-yard drive, 6 minutes, 41 seconds. Jordan Scott with a 2-yard touchdown run. Colgate and Dartmouth all even, 20 and 20, with 42 seconds to play in the third quarter. And we're awaiting the kickoff here of Jacob Stein. And the ball is headed once again. Phil Galligan's way. He's got the kick at the 12. Galligan to the 20. Galligan to the 30. To the 37. Another excellent return. Well, you know, Phil Galligan's been running kickoffs back since very early in his freshman so year. He averaged over 20 yards of return last year. That's the magic number you like to see for your stop. kickoff returner. Steve Jensen, of course, a few years ago was one of the best for Dartmouth. Uh, but that's Dartmouth terrific ball position, 35-yard line for Dartmouth. 35 seconds to go in the third period, tie yeah. game. Dartmouth started their last touchdown drive with 10.56 to go in the third quarter. So Dartmouth with a long drive. 62 yards then Colgate answers to tie the game so now final half minute or so of the third quarter first down for the big green Jenny takes a low snap fires right side caught by Galligan immediately upended as he tries to run the inside screen a gain of one oh. Galligan burned him with that play in the second quarter this time Colgate was waiting for it as soon as he caught it there were about three Colgate defenders taking a shot at him Dartmouth does not need to run another play in the third quarter. And we're down to the final 10 seconds, and it looks like we'll go to the fourth all even. So that's the end of the third quarter here at Andy Kerr Stadium in Hamilton, New York. With a score, Dartmouth 20, Colgate 20. We'll send it back for these messages on 99 Rock and the Dartmouth Sports Network. 7-7, seven, seven, not unexpected. First play of the fourth quarter, second down for Dartmouth, past Galligan, down the sidelines, he's got it first down, it deep into Colgate territory. Caught it at about the 45, takes it ahead for another 20. And a little lob sideline pass, Jenny to Galligan goes for a big play. What made that happen was the pump fake by Galligan. It looked like an out. Jenny sells a nice pump fake. Galligan turns up field, he's got two yards on the defender. Jenny lays it in there for a long gain well into Colgate territory. What's good about that is Dartmouth gave up that heartbreaking third and 33, led to a Brown, uh, Colgate score, and Dartmouth comes right back. So that's good, good emotional resilience uh, that, for the Big Green. That first play, we went for 33 yards, and out Jenny on a keeper gets two. Another final today in the Ivy League. It was Brown 17, Stony Brook 7. And That's a big win for Brown. Stony Brook beat Colgate, a scholarship program. Brown has been sort of been given the consensus of third best team in the Ivy League behind Harvard and Yale. Uh, they got a lot of offensive weapons. It looks like they can play a little D too. Second down and eight after the Alex Jenny run. The ball to Colgate 29. 20-20 tie fourth quarter. Jenny to throw. Looking for Gallagher and he's got it. Down at about the nine yard line and a first down for freshman John Gallagher, the tight end on the right side. The freshman from Oregon and he paid the price. That ball hung up a little in the air a little bit longer than anyone would have wanted. And just as he caught the ball, he got rocked by a Colgate defender, but he hung on to the ball. That shows why the freshman's out on the field playing tight end. Big, that's the second big completion of this drive for Dartmouth. And they're on the inside the Colgate 10. Gallagher's second reception of the day goes for 20. First and goal to go at the Colgate 9 as Milan Williams takes it on the right side and gets to the 5, maybe the 4. 
Penalty flag, though, on the play and a hold on Dartmouth. No, a hold on Colgate was the preliminary indication there as the ball went around the right side. But I think the referee just got it. I think he just pointed in the wrong direction. Yeah, it is. It's a hold on Dartmouth. I was going to say, how could it be a hold on Colgate there? Well, so Dartmouth could have used it, but that sets it back. So Dartmouth had a first down just inside the 10, first and goal. And they're going to go back 10 yards. Fordham has gone ahead of Columbia 29-22 with about three and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. The Patriot League opener for Colgate will come next week at Fordham. That's the Liberty Cup. They play it every year now in New York, the Manhattan versus the Bronx. It's really taken on a, a good life in New York City. Fordham, the defending Patriot League champion, um, expected to win again this year. Colgate and Holy Cross are ranked second and third in the Patriot League. Yeah. Holy Cross with a tough loss yesterday. The Citadel leading Princeton 30-17, to 17, 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter there. So the uh, officials are huddling up here. I think they decided they got it right. It was from the... They moved the ball back to the 19-yard line, so it's first and goal to go for the big green here. 13.26 to go. Holding penalty for Dartmouth after they had gotten to first and goal at the Colgate 9. Alex Jenny now forced out of the pocket, rolling to his left. And will keep it and get run down from behind the loss of a couple. Pursuit coming from the backside. Lamont Sons, a sophomore defensive end. Well, Jenny had Milan open in the flat out there. A little indecision. Do you throw it to Milan or... Or keep it. There was some space. He decided to keep it. Got tracked down from behind. So with the ball in the 21, this would be a 38-yard field goal. Certainly in the range of Foley Schmidt, the freshman has kicked one of 39 yards and one of 26 yards today. This uh, is the end zone and a penalty flag as Dartmouth didn't get the playoff. Will cost them five more yards for a delay of game here. That one hurts. The, again, Dartmouth going into the wind on this side of the field. That makes that kick. I mean, they had first down on the nine. Uh, first and goal on the nine. Now they're going to be back to their 25. Assuming it's a play clock violation. Reset the clock. I think that the officials uh, said that uh, maybe it was not reset. Everyone's struggling a little bit with the new rule this year that requires the play clock to start at 40 seconds immediately after the prior play instead of letting the ref put it down and starting at 25 seconds. So no harm there to Dartmouth. Yep, they pick up the flag. So it's second down from the 20. Jenny stands in the pocket, airs towards the end zone, looking for Eric Paul, who's flipping between two defenders, but he can't hang on. I think he got his fingertips on the ball. Would have been a, an unbelievable catch. Yeah, he was squished between two Colgate defenders. It hit him in the hands, but he had no chance to hang on to it. So sets up a third and goal at the 20. Foley Schmidt going down his routine. He goes down to kick a ball in the net by himself. Kickers, a peculiar breed always. If he makes this field goal, if he attempts it, he'll have three field goals in his first game in college. That's the entire total that Dartmouth had last year. Correct. You know, Dartmouth lost those two overtime games last year. Field goal kicker. Uh, might have given the Big Green victories. All right, Dartmouth comes to the line of scrimmage. It's third down and goal to go. Jenny with the ball on the left side hash mark. They have Tim McManus on the left side. McManus now slicing towards the end zone. The ball comes back the other way, and Jenny will throw it away here. And uh, at the end of the play, Jenny went down, and they threw a flag. It's an automatic first down, I believe. So they had third and 21. A late hit on the goal. quarterback. And it's going to be a late hit. It's a 15-yard penalty. The question is whether it's an automatic first down or not. Julius Barley, I think, was whistled for the roughing the passer penalty in the first half. Half the distance to the goal, 
moves the ball 20 to the 10. Automatic first down. I don't know if you can hear the referee, but he said personal foul striking the uh, helmet of the quarterback was the uh, the penalty. First and 10 from the 10 and a half. So Dartmouth with a chance to get a first down. Excellent field position. Well, now Colgate has made a big mistake and it's time for Dartmouth to answer with points. We're in the fourth quarter. Dartmouth and Colgate tied 20-20. Dartmouth gets a roughing the passer call against Colgate. Now Milan Williams takes the handoff and he'll fight his way for every yard he can inside to the seven, maybe to the six. Those are four hard-earned yards for Milan Williams. He ran into a crowd of Colgate defenders, just kept his legs driving almost like a rugby scrum. Gets it down to the six, so that's a gain of a good four yards for the Big Green. Colgate player injured. 23. Going off Uzi Ida, jogging off a very good defensive back. So Dartmouth... 12 minutes and 8 seconds. They left to play here in the fourth quarter. And uh, Uzi Ida, you go to school with Rehan Mutalib in uh, California. He did. Not just Palo Verdes. A couple of teammates from high school. 12.08 to play here as Dartmouth comes to the line of scrimmage. Second down. Goal to go. We'll call it from the six yard line. Alex Jenny again has Milan Williams in the backfield with him. And he wants to throw. And open is uh, Gallagher. And turns it upfield and gets taken down maybe at the three. David Morgan, who just came in with Uzi Ida going out with the injury, is the one who made the open field tackle on John Gallagher. Third down goal to go for Dartmouth. They'll say from the four, a gain of two on the little underneath pass play. The third catch of the day for Gallagher, the freshman from Salem, Oregon, certainly announcing his presence in a big way. And Dartmouth takes a timeout. Oh, is it Dartmouth? Yeah, I think they want to make sure they have got a, a good play here. So the timeout on the field, we'll take the break as well. 11.25 to play in the fourth. Dartmouth 20, Colgate 20. Big Green will have it at the Colgate 4 when we come back after this on the Dartmouth Sports Network. River Junction, 99 Rock. Off the timeout, Dartmouth comes to the line of scrimmage from the Colgate four. Third down, tie game, trying to take the lead. Jenny looking, corner of the end zone, and again, Eric Paul has trouble with attraction and can't get to the corner. It'll be an incomplete pass. Same pattern they ran for the touchdown in the third quarter. Uh, to the right this time instead of to the left. But Paul's feet get caught in the field turf. So Dartmouth again down inside the five but unable to convert for a touchdown but Foley Schmidt comes out for a chance to kick his third field goal of the day. Dartmouth with 408 yards of total offense today. No turnovers. Alex Jenny will put the ball down at the 11 a 21 yard field goal left Foley hash mark for Foley Schmidt who has field two goal. field goals today to give Dartmouth the lead and it's blocked and the ball is going to fall short and Dartmouth Comes away with no points on a blocked field goal. A terrific drive, the length of the field. They used up a lot of clock, but unable to get anything out of it. So, as well as Dartmouth has played today, they let Colgate off the hook on that third and 33, and now with a simple field goal attempt from about the 11-yard line, get it blocked. And that's, I think, the, the game experience that Colgate has playing in their fourth game, Dartmouth's opener. You know, your legs go a little wobbly in the fourth quarter of a football game, especially the first time out. So Dartmouth unable to take advantage of its opportunity. Colgate's have been averaging 7.4 yards per play today, and now they go back on offense. In a tie game, ball moves to the 20 on the missed field goal, and the handoff, nope. It'll be the uh, quarterback, Sullivan, who keeps it. It's taken Great down by Dornick after a gain of five at the 25. It's a gain of five yards. Tackled by Matthew Dornack. Well, Colgate does a nice job of running that belly option. You know, where they, they put the ball in Scott's grasp, and it looks like he's going to take it. Then at the last second, the quarterback withdraws it and goes in the opposite direction. He's carried eight 
14 times today, Sullivan, for almost 80 yards. Scott will take the ball this time, push into the middle of the field, and there's nothing there. The Dartmouth defense Jordan stops Scott Jordan Scott, Scott after a gain of a couple. And Colgate will have it here third down. They need two. Well, Dartmouth has certainly slowed Jordan down in the second half. He had 128 yards in the first half. He's only got 30 so far um, in the second half. But he's a dangerous runner, and he's capable of breaking one at any time. See if Colgate elects to keep it on the ground here. Third down. They need to get to the 30 for a first. Third and two. And the quarterback rolling right. Sullivan to keep. Has the first down. Boy, it's brought close. down right at the line, right at the 30. Bounced out right, and Didi converged on the quarterback, but the ball is across the 30, and it will be a first down for Colgate. Exactly 10 minutes to play in this one. Dartmouth drove all the way to the Colgate four at a blocked field goal. Means that Dartmouth's long drive ended with no points. First down and 10 from the 31. New set of downs for quarterback Greg Sullivan. Out of Monroe, New York. We'll give it a Scott here. A Scott ahead for 10. 12 yards. Dornak and Peterman with a stop. A gain of 11 for Jordan Scott. And this is the time of game. It's almost the way USC, the Trojans play. You wear them down now in the fourth quarter. You need the hard yards. You give it to the big guy. Just pound them up the field time after time. You wear out the defense. You wear out the, the clock. And you play for that touchdown. 9.20 to play in this one. It'll be Scott again. Same play right up the middle. Busts it across midfield to the Dartmouth 40. He's, he's some football player. You know, just after we say Dartmouth has shut him down for this in the second half, he breaks off two 10-plus yard runs for two first downs. It's only been one turnover in the game, Colgate. Lost a fumble on a sack back in the first half. Gain of 17 for Jordan Scott on that run. He has 158 yards in the game. Quarterback will keep it this time. Flag down as Sullivan angles left and gets down to the 36. A gain of five, but hold everything. Probably coming back here on a hold on Colgate. Well, there's a break for Dartmouth. They had... Oh. Well, again, the referee pointed the wrong way. But I, it's not on Dartmouth, right? It may be. Colgate certainly seems to think it is. It is a penalty on the big green. Holding. Defense. Number 96. So the ball advances down to the 26-yard line after the holding penalty is marked off. They called it on Charles Bay, the big sophomore defensive end. So first down for Colgate. Raiders marching in a tie game, 2020. Already into field goal range is Jordan Scott. Goes left, gets brought down. Joe Battaglia brings down the running back. Scott got one on the carry. Nice job by Battaglia. Alibiosu forced Scott upfield, and Battaglia was right there, hit him head on, hold him to almost no gain. 8.08 to play, clock running, Colgate moving. With the ball of the Dartmouth, 25. 20-20 tie, fourth quarter. Out of the shotgun, Sullivan to throw, looks right side and incomplete. Simons has got it, and then is pushed out of bounds of the 15 by Robbie Kradiger. That's a Colgate first down. Simons hasn't had a lot of catches today, but they've been important ones. Uh, the third play of the game, a 41-yarder for a touchdown, and a couple of key first downs here in the second half. It's only the 10th pass attempt for Colgate today. Went for 10 yards, Raiders have it. They'll say the 14 yard line, that was a gain of 11. Ball on the right side, hash mark, Jordan Scott in behind with a quarterback. 
And the quarterback keeps it. Sullivan bounces out right side, untouched into the end zone. Colgate moves in front with 7.27 to play. Greg Sullivan on a 14-yard run. And it's Colgate 26, Dartmouth 20. So after Dartmouth had taken a 20-13 lead midway through the third quarter, the Raiders come back with two scores. And with 7.27 left, Colgate's now in front. They'll try to move up by seven as Jacob Stein will try to boot this one through. Extra point kick on the way, and the kick is good. So our new score with 7.27 left is Colgate 27 and Dartmouth 20. We'll be back right after this on 99 Rock on the Dartmouth Sports Network. Colgate's just moved in front of Dartmouth 27 to 20. When we've had some offenses of some really good long drives today. Colgate's had drives of 60, 75, 73, and 80 yards. Dartmouth, an 84 and a 62-yard touchdown drive. Teams have had to work for it, and the offenses have made it click. Here comes the kickoff. They've been kicking to Galligan all day. He'll get another one here from the eight. Galligan to the 20. Cuts back 25, and that's where Dartmouth will start, now needing a touchdown. Flag coming from the far side of the field as well. 7.20 to go. Raiders getting a Greg Sullivan 14-yard touchdown run to move in front here midway through the fourth quarter. It's been Still a well-played game and only one turnover, but quite a few penalties, both sides. Dartmouth been penalized seven times. It's an illegal block in the back on Dartmouth. So Dartmouth will not start from the 25. They'll start from the 15. Each team with seven penalties. So Dartmouth needs a big drive here. Plenty of time. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go. They trail by seven. They've moved the ball well all days long. They've got 400 yards in total offense. 408 yards. That's terrific. 6.9 yards per play. But now they need to convert one of these to get back in the game. Nate service in as a fullback ahead of Milan Williams to block for Jenny. His pass over the middle, caught by Eric Paul. Reverses his direction ahead to the 31 and a first down. 16 yards, Jenny to Eric Paul. Been a good connection today, fifth catch of the day for the senior. Number 83, Eric Paul out of the Woodlands, Texas. Fordham, Fordham beat Columbia today, Wayne, final 29-22. Good win for the Rams, which shows Columbia is going to be better than expected. Fordham, the favorites in the Patriot League, so that's a good effort by the Lions. First down, Jenny drops back. Ayers, one looking for Paul, over the middle in and out of his hands. A lot of Colgate pressure there on Eric Paul. Three guys going for the ball, and it's incomplete. You know, one thing we... You know, certainly bears mentioning, Wayne, is how much time Alex Jenny has had to throw today. This offensive line has been tremendous. Yeah, that was the big concern coming in. Would he have enough time? They have a freshman at center. They have a sophomore at guard, two sophomores at guards, a junior tackle and a senior tackle. They've done a terrific job all day long. 6.48 left, second and 10 from the 31. Dartmouth trails by seven. Jenny... Pump fakes, now looking for Galligan, who's open, and he's got it at the Colgate 35. Had to slow the pattern up a little bit to wait for the ball and did it beautifully. First down, Big Green. I don't know what the pattern was that got Galligan that open, but he was behind one Colgate defender in front of another. As you pointed out, he had to adjust his route to come back to the ball, but he did it, makes the catch. 32 yards on the pass play, Jenny to Phil Galligan. Alex Jenny with a 300-yard passing day today. And no turnovers. That's what he, he's got to continue to throw it away. If there's nothing available, don't force it. You'll get your chances. First and 10, Milan Williams takes the handoff. Lot of running room, middle of the field. Down to the 24 and a pickup of 13 for the Big Green. 14th carry today for Milan Williams. He's up to 58 yards. He averaged over five yards a carry last year, and he's pretty close to that today, as well as uh, four catches. So uh, he can run the ball, he can catch the ball and run with it after the catch. 
Alex Jenny continues to do a terrific job. He's now 26 for 39, over 300 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. He's only had one start previously in his career at Harvard last year. Uh, he's off to an excellent start this year as the first-team quarterback for the Big Green. Just looking at my statistics here, on these uh, on this list, way they have Jenny, eight carries for 94 yards. That's not right. That's not right. There's, no, there's no way that he has 94. So that 469 in total yards may be off. There's a mistake somewhere in the scoring. But he does have the 300 yards passing. Yep. First down and 10 from the Colgate 24. Can Dartmouth rally to tie this? 550 to go. Jenny will give it to Milan Williams. He'll spin his way ahead across the 20 and down to the 17-yard line. Good what run. a nice run by Milan Williams. He looked like he was going to be stopped at about a three-yard gain. He spun out. Found a gap, got through it, picks up a total of about seven. The offensive line for Dartmouth is getting stronger, and these guys are only going to get better because it's the most difficult thing in, in football is for the offensive line to play together, to learn the calls, to figure out what everybody else is doing. If they're doing it this well today, that's a good sign for the Big Green. 5.15 to go. Jenny pump fakes once and then gets tackled. Carlton Walker, the defensive tackle. Will bring down Alex Jenny back of the 24-yard line. Loss of seven. It's third and ten. So the Big Green at second and three on the about the 17, uh, which was certainly within field goal range, although they need seven to tie the game. Yeah, there will be no field goal attempt with 445 no. to go. Jenny pump fake once, went to pump fake a second time and got rocked by the Colgate defender to set up the third and ten. Dartmouth trails 27-20. We're down to four and a half minutes left in this one. Here's a third down 10. Jenny looking over the middle for Gallagher off his fingertips. The tight end backing up, backing up, reached up to try to get it. And he couldn't get there. Now it's fourth and 10. Just missed the ball a little bit high. Maybe Gallagher went for it a second too soon. Looked like he could almost get it. He tipped it. He was... He, he came down inside the five and certainly, not certainly, had a pretty good chance to go in the end zone if he caught it. So here's the game. Fourth down and ten. The ball on the Colgate 24. Dartmouth needs a first down because Colgate can run out the clock with Jordan Scott or at least make a pretty good go of it. Big green needing ten. A lot of noise coming from across the way where the Colgate fans are. Jenny looking, looking. Pressure's on from behind. He gets sacked, lost the ball. Colgate has it at the 33-yard line. And the Raiders will take over on downs with a seven-point lead and 4.17 to go. The fumble relatively unimportant there because it was fourth down, so um, Colgate was going to get the ball anyway if Dartmouth doesn't complete the pass. So now trailing by seven, Dartmouth has four minutes to go. And Colgate, I mean, here's where Jordan Scott, you can just give him the ball and let him eat up the clock in yards. Colgate will need two or three first downs with Dartmouth still showing two timeouts. The question is when Dartmouth gets the ball back, will they be down by more than seven? Greg Sullivan, who's done a tremendous job running the offense for Colgate today, gives to Scott, breaks one tackle, flag down. As Scott moves to the 35, the penalty will stop the clock with 413 left. Now here's an interesting choice. If it's holding, which it probably is, Scott got nothing on that play. So do you take the, the 10 yards to set up first and 20, but um, they get an extra down? Or do you just reject the penalty and oh, let them go on second down? Darwin's going to set them back 10 yards. So Colgate still has four opportunities. Now they got to go 20 yards to go, but four minutes, 13 seconds to go. Colgate with a seven-point lead. Alex Jenny sacked on a fourth down play. Harvest had some good opportunities in Colgate territory here in the fourth quarter, and they have not been able to put a point on the board. Driving twice into Colgate territory, twice into the red zone, not getting any points. 3.57 on the clock, clock running. They'll hand it off. Jordan Scott will try to bounce out right, and he'll get run down from behind by Andrew Didi up at the 30. I think it's going to be a face mask on Dartmouth. Jordan Scott on the carry. There, there is, is no incidental face mask anymore. 
When a penalty is a face mask, it's the major 15-yard penalty now. Well, Colgate's other, marching back. The other possibility is another holding on Colgate. There's been so many of them, it's hard to believe they'll get another, but. Illegal block in the back. Number 80 of the offense. It is an illegal Foul block in the back Foul. on Colgate. Certainly so helping sit- Dartmouth's chances here. Well, they are, and they are, and in that it's now first and 20. More than 20. It's more than 20. Almost 30, but Colgate still has four downs to go. So the clock, n- not, not running now, but. Time's running away, and Colgate still has four downs. 26, first and 26. Clock is running. First and 26 from the 17-yard line. Boy, Colgate's not going to want to put the ball in the air here. Dartmouth knows that. Here's the handoff to Scott for a quick three. Yeah, Colgate's going to keep it on the ground, use up the clock. Now, Dartmouth has two timeouts. They use one at the end of the third quarter there, so they may have to, after this play, use one of them to stop the clock and get the ball back with some time to play. Colgate will be running this play with about two and a half minutes to play in the football game. 27-20. Colgate leading the big green. Dartmouth season opener. They played very well in the game today. Can they somehow figure out a way to get back to even maybe force overtime like we had last year? Greg Sullivan has made very few mistakes back at quarterback. Rolling out here, reverse, hands it to Jordan Scott, running room right side, 35-40, Scott 50 into Dartmouth territory, and Peterman runs him down to the 31. What a beautifully run play for Colgate as they angle Scott left, and then he takes a cut back and finds a ton of running room on the right side. Where everybody went in the same direction as Scott, and when he cut back against the grain, there was nothing but running room. That'll put him over 200 yards on the day, and that'll be the play that really breaks it for Dartmouth. Colgate was looking at second and about 26. Uh, Dartmouth had a chance to get the ball back with some time on the clock. Now Colgate in much better position the ball at the Dartmouth 31. 50-yard run for Jordan Scott. Two minutes to play in the game. Quarterback will keep it. Sullivan's got running room, and he's gone. 2015 10 5 touchdown. Colgate puts it away with a 31 yard touchdown run by their quarterback, Greg Sullivan, with a 153 left on the clock. 21 unanswered points for the Raiders. It's Colgate 33, Dartmouth 20. Well, I think this is where the fact that Colgate has three prior games becomes a factor. And it's not an excuse, but that's midseason form. Coaches always talk about how much improvement teams make between the first and second week. Uh, So here's Colgate, game fit, Dartmouth playing its first game of the season. They played evenly all along, and then in the fourth quarter, Colgate just has worn them down. And now instead of a seven-yard run, they're breaking long runs. So Colgate tacks on the extra point with 153 to play in the game. Colgate's up 34-20 on the big green and again just a guard with a couple of drives down deep on Colgate didn't get points and today they would have needed touchdowns on both of those drives just to find us even at this point 34 20 and Colgate looking like they'll move to two and two and Dartmouth will head back home to play three and oh University of New Hampshire next week we'll be on the air at 11 30 next Saturday morning from Memorial Field and the first of our five home games. Be sure to visit DartmouthSports.com to get your tickets. Ricky Santos has graduated from UNH, the all-everything quarterback, a four-year starter, took UNH four times to the NCAA tournament, three times to the round of eight. Everybody thought he may be irreplaceable, but Toman, the new uh, UNH quarterback from Southern California, has stepped right in, doing an excellent job. They're All-American tight end, Scott Sicko. Uh, excellent UNH team. Beat Army, 1A Army. Beat Albany today. They've really got it going over there in Durham. It's a bit of a shame they can't have a facility to match their program. But under Sean McDonald, the last five, six years, UNH has been a one of the best 1AA programs in the country. 
And we'll get to see them next Saturday. All right, Dartmouth, let's see what they can do here. A minute 53 left, still two timeouts. A quick score, maybe an onside kick. Galligan will be backed up to the goal line. Bring the kick back, 15 to the 17. That's where Dartmouth will start, first down and 10. And the unofficial statistics here today have Alex Jenny 26 for 40 for 302 yards. Phil Galligan, nine receptions for 127. And Eric Paul, five for 87. It's a pretty good tandem. Certainly have to like what you've seen of tight end freshman John Gallagher today. He's made some big catches. All the freshmen have done well today. Fletcher at center. All right, Dartmouth with the ball. Alex Jenny under pressure. Dumps one off Milan Williams. Little screen will go for five. Maybe six yards up to the 25. He's run out of bounds there. Milan didn't find a lot of running room on the ground today, but, you know, you look at the end of the day, the set stats show 15 carries, 65 yards. Certainly acceptable. And now five catches on the day for Milan Williams. That's a 100-yard day of production. 138 left. Gallagher will be the end on the right. Paul and McManus to the left. Over the middle. Gallagher, what a catch in traffic. Gives Dartmouth the first down over the 40-yard line. He's going to be a terrific player because he's making a couple of hard catches over the middle where he knows he's going to get rocked just when he catches it and he's hanging on to the ball. Jenny he hasn't even started classes yet and he's off to a great start. Jenny under pressure will throw one away. 119 left. So it'll be second down and 10. Pressure by number 91, Jim Mira. Colgate led 6 3 at the quarter. We were all even at the half, 13 13. We were all even after three quarters, 20 to 20. But Colgate has scored two touchdowns here in the fourth. They lead 34 to 20 over the Big Green. Jenny standing back at his 35-yard line again. Jordan Scott, very tough. Here's one over the middle and one in and out of the hands of Gallagher. Now he was running backwards, and the ball came in on his numbers. He just couldn't hang on to it. Very nearly another great catch. So it'll be third and ten. Well, this will be the last time we see Jordan Scott win. Well, he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats. This is the second time. He's got 239 yards today. Second time he's gone for over 200 against Dartmouth. Two touchdowns. That gives him nine in his career against Dartmouth. He matches up. His numbers match up with Ed Marinaro and Chad Levitt. You know, all the best backs you've ever heard of in the Ivy League. He's uh, the lead, now the leading Colgate runner and in one double-A going to the top of those statistics. He's going to carry over 5,000 yards and well over 50 touchdowns in his career. Those are just remarkable numbers. Alex Jenny on a third and ten just missed with Gallagher again. So Dartmouth's into a fourth down and ten here with 107 to play. The Big Green needing 14 points in 67 seconds. Still with two timeouts. Jenny fourth down needs to complete here and his pass is caught. Boy, tough catch as Phil Galligan had to go around Colgate defender Corey Moses, and down near the ground, got the hands under the ball and made the catch. First down at the Raider 49. And Dartmouth jumped too soon on the play trying to spike it. Tenth catch of the day for Galligan. He had 25 catches last year, so he's off to a terrific start, the senior wide receiver. Ball start. Well, 10 catches by far has to be a career high. Yeah for Phil Galligan in one game. Certainly a lot of positives you can take out of this season opener, but as Coach Buddy Tevens said in the pregame show today, Dartmouth's got to figure out now how to, to win some of these games. They play so well on another quick slant. Galligan's got it at the 45 and out of bounds. Phil Galligan on the reception. Well, it gets tougher next week. UNH, as good as Colgate is traditionally, 
and the Patriot League, the one, that, those scholarship schools, the Atlantic 10, I guess it's now the Colonial Conference, game. but James Madison and Hofstra, UMass, UNH, Maine, they're a step up. They're full scholarship programs. 49 seconds left, and Jenny drops back. Will pump fake, looking long, Galligan open on the sideline, and it's no. He got his hand on the ball. He had run into a spot where he was wide open on the sideline, but the pass took a little long to get down there, and it was a little too far, incomplete. So it'll be third down and eight for Dartmouth, 42 seconds left. Jenny, 30 of 48 for 343 yards. And he'll drop back here. Jenny gets hit as he was to throw. It'll be a fumble recovered by the Raiders. So it'll go as a turnover. And that actually would be the first official turnover of the day on Dartmouth. Zach Smith with a hit on quarterback Alex Jenny. Coach Buddy Tevens down below here with a hand around Alex Jenny. Though I think be pretty uh, be pleased with the performance. Very today. happy with the way Alex Jenny played today. Thirty for forty-eight, well over sixty percent. Uh, he did have the one fumble, but at the end of the game, he didn't make any bad decisions. There's a crucial time in the game. Three hundred and forty-three yards. I, I think a really good football player was born today for the Big Green at quarterback. So Colgate now will just be able to run the clock out as they take a knee, and the Raiders are going to beat Dartmouth again today here in the season opener. Final score from Andy Kerr Stadium as we run down the final 10 will be Colgate 34 and Dartmouth 20. We'll take a break. And then we'll come back to uh, recap this one for you. You're listening to 99 Rock on the Dartmouth Sports Network.